Am I the asshole here for telling my parents to keep all the money they stole from me while I was in university and shove it up their ass? I got a job while I was in high school. It was with a friend of my father. I put away most of it and just bought myself some stuff that I wanted, but my parents wouldn't buy for me. My parents aren't rich, but they do well enough. They wanted me to appreciate that material goods were paid for with my time. I didn't mind. I bought myself a PS4 and some games. Which they made me share with my younger brother and sister. Once again, I didn't mind. I mostly played while they did homework or slept. When I graduated from high school, they said that I had to start paying rent. That sucked because I was going to university in the fall, and I was hoping to save up over the summer so that I could work less during the school year. So I worked my ass off in school and at work. I ended up getting a job loading delivery trucks before school. And that sucked because I went to sleep at 7pm most nights so I could get up early and go to work. I'm about to graduate and I found a job in another province. I've already started doing my onboarding and online training. I'll go from my graduation to loading my car to leave. My parents had a graduation party for me where they tried to present me with a check for all the rent I paid plus a pittance in interest. I looked at the check for about a minute and I started laughing. All I could think of was the fact that I had no social life during university. Because I was working. I didn't have any money in investments like my friends did because they were taking my money. I asked them how they were doing this for my sister. They said they weren't since she wasn't working while she went to school. So I tore up the check and told them to shove it up their asses. I told them that when they compensated me for all the sleep I lost, four years of no social life during university, and four summer vacations, then I would speak to them again. I told my little brother not to get a job or they would screw him over too. I went to my room, grabbed my computer, some clothes, my PS4, and my toiletries. My brother and sister can play on the PS5 my parents bought the family. They were yelling at me the whole time. I said if they touched me or tried to stop me, I would call the cops. I loaded up my car that I paid for, I insure, and is registered to me. I then drove to my friend's parents' house and had a bit of a breakdown. They let me stay there since she is away at university in another city. I blocked my parents and my brother and sister. I'd already given notice at my job, so I called my boss and told him I was sick and would not be available for my last week. He said he understood and laughed. He said he was surprised I'd kept working this close to graduation. My grandfather called me to talk a couple of days later. We went to Timmy's and he let me unload everything I felt. They took money from me that I could have used to make my life better. I didn't even have time for a girlfriend. My entire university romantic life was hooking up with a woman that I work with when her ex-husband had the kids for the weekend. He said that my parents' hearts were in the right place and that they thought that they were helping me. I said they owed me four years of fun, of parties I was too tired to go to, of social events and networking I didn't do, all the shit they were subsidizing for my sister, and that they would then end up subsidizing for my brother. He said he understood and hugged me. He's old, but I couldn't have gotten free of that hug if I tried. He asked me if I needed money to start my new job. I said I didn't want anything that came from my parents. He gave me a cashier's check for about three times what my parents took from me. He said to use it however I wanted in my new life. He said it wasn't part of my inheritance or anything. It was a gift from him and something my grandma would have wanted me to have. My friends think I was stupid to tear up the check. Most of them agree with me about being pissed at my parents. Some have called me to say that I behaved terribly and that I owe my parents an apology. I thank them for the call or message and then block them. I'm calmer now and I do not think I am in the wrong. But maybe I'm too close to see what I'm missing. Am I the asshole here? In the comments, Fish On Again says, Make sure you keep up the lines of communication with Grandpa. He's going to be there for you when you need an objective ear. I'm 40 years old and would do anything to have that back. This may all eventually blow over or not. Stay true to yourself. It's gotten you this far and that's pretty awesome. Not the asshole in the least. There is a line between teaching a child the value of hard work versus grinding them into the ground. $7.50 a month in rent that they did not need is cruel and unkind. And meanwhile, they were buying PS5s for the family. 
so it's clear that this lesson they claim that you needed to learn isn't one that they feel the younger kids need. Work isn't inherently good. My spouse's neck and knees are permanently effed up from low-wage work that his parents insisted he get to build his character. He is in pain every day and will be for the rest of his life. But hey, he got a job. Effing Puritan attitudes like that need to die. I'm sorry your parents tried to teach you responsibility in the worst way possible. Edit to add, and I'm seeing from your other comments that you paid your own tuition and they made you buy your own food. I'm genuinely in awe that you managed to graduate at all. Full-time school, full-time work, and full-time self-care is so hard. And I can only imagine how their draconian methods hurt your grades and networking, which can sometimes be more valuable than the degree itself. I wish you all the best in the future. Please know that your best years are ahead of you, and there is still much joy to experience. And never let anyone convince you that just because some people have it hard, that you therefore deserve to have it hard as well. You deserve loved ones who try to make your life better, not abusers who erect unnecessary obstacles to haze you. Just a note, invite your grandpa to visit you once you have a place. Take him to dinner, talk about life, go see movies or music together. No one ever does that for older family members, and he sounds a little lonely for his wife. Not the asshole. Absolutely not the asshole for this one from my opinion, OP. I think you were more than justified to rip up that check and scream abuse at them for what they're doing. Because they've obviously learnt their lesson here that what their draconian parenting methods result in is something that is not good. Because they're not doing that to your younger sister, and they sure as hell won't be doing it to the younger brother. It's these lovely parenting mistakes that we all make for the oldest kid, and then we figure it out for the rest, hey? But don't blame us or yell at us for that, because uh, <laughs> what do we know? We were just young and naive, stupid parents, huh? I'm not seeing them admitting their faults and saying that they screwed up, and I'm not really seeing any apologies coming from their end, so that doesn't sound pretty great either. Definitely not the asshole. And now, on to the update. I took a lot of what you guys had to say to heart. I unblocked my family and spoke with my parents. I agreed to meet up with them for lunch today. We went to the keg and talked. They said they didn't realize how I felt for those four years. My mum cried and said she was very sorry that I felt like they didn't care about me. I guess they read my post from before it got taken down, and they're disturbed by what I wrote. They are also upset that my girlfriend is a single mom 14 years older than me. They asked if they could meet her, and I said no. They offered me the check again, and this time I took it and thanked them. I said I would come home later. After lunch, I went to the bank and deposited it. Since we all bank at the same branch, it was easy to cash it. I made sure that the money was in my account, and then I blocked them again. <laughs> I just wrote my girlfriend, quote unquote, a check for $4,312 to help her out. It was the interest on the money, more or less. She is a decent person, and she taught me a lot. She works her ass off loading trucks, and she deserves something good in her life. I know that isn't me. I'm seeing my grandfather tomorrow. I'm going to make sure that he knows what I did, and why. I'm also going to invite him out to see my new place once I move out west. I'm spending the weekend at my girlfriend's house, since her ex has the kids. Thank you all for your help and advice. In the comments, Sadwind8580 says, I hope your move goes well and you start healing. Keep in contact with your grandpa. He sounds like a stand-up dude. Maybe in time you'll want a relationship with your siblings, and he can help facilitate that if necessary. I'm glad you got your money, because it was effing yours. Back in your account too. OP says, I loved giving away their interest. I only have what was rightfully mine, and she will use it well. Enigmatic Soul says, I was absolutely blasted on your original post for suggesting that you took the money and then blocked your parents again. Glad that you got what you were owed, and now can move on with the satisfaction of knowing you did this after the all that they have put you through. And OP says, I'm pretty sure you planted this germ of an idea in my brain. Be sure to invest and grow that money to support your future. Good on you for taking the money. Use it to improve your life. And OP says, I actually got some amazing financial advice on my other post. My grandfather is also very smart about money. It's a nice start anyways. Not the asshole. You had me sad when you said that you were going home. 
and then you blocked them again, and I literally yelled, YES! You had me worried there for a second. OP says, Nope, just sitting here with my friend drinking and laughing. Well, I'll start by asking you why you keep putting girlfriend in quotations, both in the post and comments. From what I remember from OP's now deleted first post, he was so busy with school and work, he didn't have time for a real relationship. He was hooking up with a single mom from work when the ex had the kids. It sounds like an exclusive friends with benefits situation. She's a fair bit older than OP, but a really decent person. They get along, the arrangement is working for the both of them at present, but unlikely to have a future together. OP says, She was very clear that I was an idiot when I started developing feelings for her. She told me that if I didn't drop that shit, she would not invite me over anymore. She was not in love with me, and I was just convenient and willing to do what she wanted. And that is the happy-go-lucky comment that we're going to end this episode on, guys. So, with that said, I do hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, if you did, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Am I wrong for ultimately wanting a divorce, even after my wife has showed much more effort in our relationship? For context, coming into the new year, I had no idea that my wife had been, at the bare minimum, having an emotional affair with a co-worker. On New Year's Eve, before I found out about this, she came home and acted extremely cold toward me and our kids. She was angry. Earlier on in the evening, she asked if she could go out to have one drink with a female co-worker, whom I knew and trusted. I told her that that was cool, but that the kids were staying up for the ball drop, so as long as she could be back to celebrate with them, then I was fine with it. Well, she ended up getting off work at 11.30 and barely had enough time to get home. After the ball drop, she cried and cried. I asked her what was wrong, and she said she got invited to a friend's house to have drinks with them, all three of them women, all married, I had no issue. I said, look, I'm not sure what's wrong and why you're crying about this. That's fine. You deserve a girl's night out every once in a while. I don't mind watching the kids. Just go. I put the kids to bed. She left, and then about three hours later, so 3am, I tried to contact her. No answer. I wait about 15 minutes, call her again, no answer. I call her friend who she's supposed to be with, no answer. She then texts me back five minutes later and says, yeah, I'm still coming home tonight, we're still drinking. Never in our six years of marriage had I felt a gut feeling that something else was going on, but that night it all hit me. I went through our phone records and found another number that I was unfamiliar with that she had been in contact with all night. Ignoring my calls, texting that number in between, etc. She'd also been texting this number for a three-month period daily. I never suspected that she would be texting another dude while right beside me while watching family movies either, as times had shown. How I didn't see this, I have no idea. Maybe she had this individual listed as mum in her phone. I don't know. I had never gotten this vibe or feeling our entire marriage. I was blindsided by it. Anyways, I confront her about it through text with the proof like an idiot. She speeds home, deletes everything on her phone, no way of getting the backups restored, no way of ever knowing that she did not meet up with this guy. Upon finding this out, I immediately told her I wanted a divorce. It was at this point she began getting violent with me, talking shit about everything I'd been doing to keep us financially stable, the 18-hour workdays that kept a roof over our heads. She told me that I needed to leave even though I pay rent and both our kids are asleep. I refused. We slept in separate rooms that night, and the next day she tried to act like nothing even happened, claiming that she remembered that we'd fought, but couldn't remember what it was about. So I show her the phone records, even though I'm positive she was just trying to pull some crap. She confesses who the individual was, and says they flirted a lot, but never met up. I told her if that was true, she'd have no issues restoring the text messages she deleted, at which point it was confirmed she deleted everything and deleted her last backup. She also saved a backup after they were deleted the night everything went to shit. Since then, she's tried hard to convince me they never did anything and never saw each other aside from work. I keep finding bits and pieces of things that don't make sense. Chunks of texts deleted from her friend's messages around that time, pictures on her Google Drive from that night, 
where she was with who she said she was, deleted from her phone for what reason? The most damning evidence I have is a two-hour period on New Year's Eve. They stopped texting each other, then randomly started texting again at around 3am, when I started calling and got that feeling. My gut tells me that she left her friend's place, went to his place, and went back. Or, she went straight to his place from our place, then went to her friend's when she found out that I was calling them. There are revealing pictures of herself she never sent me, also on her Google Drive taken on Snapchat. She's since given me all her attention. She initiates intimacy tenfold. The texting stopped, she shows me everything on her Snapchat, and even downloads her data to show me she's not hitting other people up. I'm seeing the side of her I haven't seen since we were married all those years ago. But I can't help but trust my gut in demanding a divorce. I feel like she's kept things from me. Not knowing for sure is killing me inside. My parents know all of this and keep pressuring me to work it out and not dwell. My brothers are saying F that and get a divorce. Am I wrong in getting a divorce? Keep in mind the dates. It's now been over four months since this occurred. I'm positive she cut the individual completely out, but I still can't get over the not 100% knowing, and my gut tells me that she is still lying. Edit. If some of this is confusing, ask and I will clarify. I will also give context where needed. Also, sorry for the way that this was written. I'm aware there is some jumping back and forth, etc. I'm just scatterbrained right now. It's honestly getting to me more now than the night that I found out. It just keeps building. I feel stupid. Edit 2. Also, forgot to add this. The individual question is an employee that she manages. As in, she is his direct supervisor. I've heard that there are greater legal consequences for this, but I have no idea. For clarification, the individual in question is actually morbidly obese. I'm by no means fit, fit, but I'm not fat either. Went back and looked at the timestamps for the pictures that were deleted of her and her friends that night on Google Drive. Before that two hour period of no texting, during and after, there were several pictures taken with verified timestamps on them, as in they cannot be changed on Google Drive. Whether or not she has a friend that's tech savvy and was able to do that within 10 minutes it took her to get home upon confronting, I don't know. Is this possible? It's also worth adding that I come from a family that has thoroughly convinced one of my cousins that she needs to stay in her marriage even when her husband became solely reliant on her, got addicted to coke, is still addicted to coke, and physically abused her. All because, by golly, no one in this family has ever gotten a divorce. So essentially doing so, I thought I would get disowned by my parents, my sister, all my cousins, all my aunts, and all my uncles but would still have the support of my two brothers. Update 1. Currently on morning break at work. Been reading through the comments. I have off tomorrow, so I will be heavily weighing in my options when I get some time to myself tomorrow. May not update tomorrow, but I'll update y'all when I can. Thank you all for the input, positive and negative. The best thing I can do right now is just get through the work week, get my kids from daycare, and be mentally present for them. I've been ignoring her since last night, and she's been snapping and calling me all morning to see what's wrong. OP on his wife lying to him, and the family telling him to reconsider divorcing, OP says, I'll be honest with you, the two main reasons I've tried to tough it out are, one, the kids, even though she pretty much said screw you to all of us on New Year's Eve, and two, for some reason my parents have really been pressuring me to stay, it's screwing with me, and I don't know why. They keep reminding me that no one in this family has ever gotten a divorce, blah blah blah. They said that I'll most likely never end up seeing my children again, even though in my state if the spouse is found to have cheated, this essentially gives up their rights to children if a divorce is filed. I really don't understand how my own parents can sit there and feed me bullcrap stories about people they know that went through it and came out a better couple. Really feels like they're taking her side in everything that happened while ignoring every truth. Inevitable True 7223 asks, Did she come home acting extremely cold, or did she work until 11? OP replies, Silence. Our daughter ran up to her for a hug and she started crying. She then got really irritated when our daughter asked her for a drink. Something that still doesn't sit right with me. She started yelling at her saying, Mommy needs some effing space! 
When I tell y'all there was literally no sign of all this crap until that, she hid everything extremely well. Also, for everyone saying that they are about the two hour period, yes, that was my thought. I went back through the Google Drive at everything that was removed from her phone. There were pictures and selfies taken with her friends at the place she was supposed to be during that time period before it and after it. I doubt she's tech savvy enough to edit timestamps on Google Drive once everything is backed up. This isn't to say they never met up, this isn't to say that she doesn't know how to do that, and it still doesn't make a difference with everything she did. Like I said, weighing options tomorrow, reaching out to a lawyer tomorrow. No spanking allowed says, she's love bombing you. She hasn't stopped with that guy, but love bombing will make you think that you are all she thinks about. It'll slowly wind down to what it was before once she thinks that she has you back to being clueless. She's met up with a guy. You know she did. Hell, there's enough here to make anyone believe that she might have met up with him. What do you think she was crying about? She wanted to be with him for New Year's Eve. Take it from there. You don't know everything. You'll most likely never will. She'll just hide it better. Yeah, I'm of the mind in this situation that... You just got a divorce. You are asking so many questions and doing such an investigation into this and you are so paranoid. It, it's so obvious you don't trust her anymore. Why are you sticking this marriage out? You know that it's going to be better for you in the long run to just amicably co-parent separated and you can get this off your mind. Yet you're still looking for reasons to stay, OP. I don't think that's the right thing to do. She, she deleted everything and then deleted the backups. What more proof do you need? That's disgusting behavior. If you have nothing to hide, why did you delete everything? That's my, that's my question here. Screw your family for allowing abuse to continue and perpetuating it, especially with a cousin whose coke-addicted husband beats her. Jesus. What do you see in this family? Genuinely, oh, I really want to win the respect of a group of people that allowed a coke-addicted husband to stay with the wife and say that, you know, it's hurting the kids more than <laughs> the punches to your face that you're receiving from this guy. The abuse is nothing compared to the potential separation and your safety. Please think with your head, OP. And now, on to the update. So I sit here typing this out on my morning break while listening to Tuesday's Gone by Leonard Skernard. After a long day of considering my options on Friday, I sat my wife down on Friday evening when she got off work and I had put the kids to bed. As soon as I brought up that my trust in her was completely gone, she immediately became argumentative and essentially said, I thought we'd left this in the past. You never trusted me, did you? I responded with, even if you didn't do anything physical or met up with him outside of work, you'll never let me see those text messages. You'll never pull the Snapchat data. She responded with, You're right. Marriage is based off trust, and if you don't trust me, then maybe we ought to call it quits. The irony is that I worked 18 to 19 hour days for the past few years, barely being able to do anything that I wanted to do in my life because I was supporting our children, getting them to bed, cleaning the house all the time, doing all the cooking, barely even getting enough sleep, probably took years off of my life just from the stress. She on New Year's Eve said F the kids, F you, and essentially went out to party with her friends, all the while ignoring calls from me and our daughter, asking where she was, while also responding to her bare minimum emotional affair partner. Not getting into all the details so as to not repeat myself between this and the updates. Long story short, in my state, we have to be separated for a year before a divorce can be finalized. When I agreed with her that we should start separating and that I'd already been in contact with a lawyer, she freaked the F out on me. She begged me not to go through with it. But alas. Next Friday, I will be dropping her off at her parents a few hours away. The kids will be staying with me for now with the help of one of my brothers. I told her there was only one way that I would put this off for now. That was pull the data, pull the texts, prove your case. She looked down at the ground, one more time, and told me that's a violation of her privacy. We haven't spoken since. For now, for my kids, I gotta keep on keeping on. Update, trickle truth. First it was a guy in a different state, second it was a co-worker, third it was someone underneath her that she supervises, fourth, and just now, randomly got a text from her stating that she may have told him she loves him, but instantly regretted it, and that's it. Right. 
Also, let me reiterate the process of separation starts this coming Friday. In my state, you cannot divorce immediately. It takes a full year. I say this because of all the people stating, just divorce and be done with it. And also those stating, stop giving second chances. In the comments, Scruffer's dad says, OP, you do realize that your attorney can subpoena her phone records and texts, right? If you believe that there was cheating, have your lawyer get all of those messages. Then you'll know and she'll be out of luck. OP replies, definitely gonna happen. I've already been in contact with one, and in the state that I live in, if there was infidelity, she essentially loses any choice in the matter of where the kids stay. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I've been in a similar situation. He wouldn't show me the texts. He spent about a half hour clearing them, and then he let me see his phone. <laughs> Lol. OP says, For me, it's pretty black and white. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that she physically cheated. I'd love to just believe her and move on, but I can't. Not only did she delete all texts between them, she deleted all texts from multiple friends and co-workers from that same time as well, but left the ones from prior and after. As far as I'm concerned, her friends were in on it, and so was anyone else that she deleted texts from. She knows that she can't show you the texts because they prove her affair and how far it went. By not showing you what was said between them is all the information that you need. It was so incriminating that she couldn't bear to show you them. You did the right thing, she failed the marriage test, and you need to move on and find someone that respects you. Sorry that you're going through all this. Good luck going forward. When he drops her off at the parents, he should definitely mention to the father-in-law that she can come back and they can put a stop to the process if she just hands over the messages. Edit, enough people don't get it, so I'll spell it out. It is a lie, a ruse, a bamboozle if you would, a psychological tactic to turn her parents and her family against her because it is highly unlikely that she would ever mention the texts in any context to her parents or family as it plainly makes her look guilty. Even if the parents don't believe that she cheated, they will become incredibly annoyed by her actions. Best case scenario, she turns over the texts confirming cheating and the divorce becomes crazy easy. Not showing the texts is proof enough that she physically cheated. She knows that it will be worse than whatever narrative she was pushing. It's a no-brainer if it supported her narrative and absolutely needed to heal the relationship's trust. She is still actively hiding the thing that broke the trust. He's right to move on. She's gonna make him feel like shit for her mistake indefinitely if he stayed. If she were innocent, she would be printing those conversations out on paper to roll up and physically hit you with after reading them out loud. No woman alive is going to destroy evidence that a man that they are arguing with is wrong. No person alive is going to destroy evidence that they're right regardless of gender. My wife and I have an amazing relationship with really solid communication, and if one of us is right, whoo Nelly, it's gonna be a long day for the other one. Intentionally giving that up? Not a chance in hell. And now onto the latest update. Long story short, I found out my wife had been having an affair on New Year's Eve as I sat at home with our children. After ignoring calls from not only me, but our daughter asking where she was, I went through our phone records to see that while she ignored our calls, she was accepting calls and texting another number quite frequently. For the record, it was the first time in over 12 years of being together that I'd ever gotten a gut feeling to do so. Never checked them prior to that night. I called the friends who she was supposed to be with, and they ignored my calls as well. After confronting her through text at around 4 or 5 a.m., she was home within five minutes, screaming at me and yelling at me as I tried to sleep. I got blamed for everything, even though I had been loyal and the financial breadwinner our entire marriage. She ended up gaslighting me and trickle-truthing as I tried to keep things together for our children. I'll spare you all the details, as they can be found in previous updates and the original post. Fast forward to today... I filed for our divorce against my family's wishes. Whole other story also answered in my previous updates. We are separated, but the divorce can't be finalized until next year. One year of being separated is required. She begged and begged for me not to go through with it, begged me to stay, not to toss everything out over one little mistake. Funny how she sees infidelity as a mistake that lasted three months. Yeah. 
Regardless, I've spent a lot of time with my kids. She sees them on weekends if she chooses. Has only been a couple of times. I'd love to say that I'm over it all, but I'm still healing. I really did love her and I wish things worked out different, but I can never trust her again. She tried everything she could sexually to get me to stay. Hell, the day she finally confessed everything, I came up to her dressed like never before, ready to go. I declined. She went as far as offering me head every day for the rest of our lives if I stayed. I've been working and taking care of the kids. It's harder on them than it is me if I'm being honest. They still don't understand. I've just been telling them mummy has some things that she's working on. I don't have the heart to tell them that we won't be a functional household anymore at this time. Also, my parents haven't one time talked to or reached out to me since I told them that I was filing for divorce, not even to check on my kids or anything. But I've been making this work with the help of my brother and a few good friends. A few girlfriends from the past have hit me up to see if I want to catch up, but I need to focus on myself and my kids. Thank you all for reaching out through DMing and commenting. In the comments, Mr. Ocean Bear says, Did you like, make some big social media announcement about the separation or something? The ex-girlfriends thing is the first weird part of the story that I've seen, and I've been following since the beginning. Anyway, good luck with your weird extended family. Hope they can get over you divorcing. Her not showing up for her kids is pretty wild. I hope she can get her shit together for their sakes. OP replies, No, I haven't made a post on anything, but here, where I'm anonymous about it. I have a really small circle of friends that I keep in contact with, but word eventually got out that we had separated. Edit, just to clarify, if I had, many of you would know who I am by now. Maybe not a lot of you, but a good few of you would have pieced it together by now. Has she actually admitted to cheating and the scope of what she did? I'm sorry, I didn't see that in any of your posts. OP says, Ah, sorry, yes. She sent me a half-assed confession while I was at work through Snapchat one day, bawling hysterically, telling me that she effed up and kissed him one time after he walked her to her car. I don't believe that for one second. I said, if that's all, then prove it by providing me with the messages you deleted. Once again, I was met with, that's an invasion of my privacy, plus if I was in your position, I would just want to forgive, forget, and move on. Easy for the cheater to go ahead and say. I pressed it a few more times and was met with, trust me, you don't want to read that shit. Why would you want to read that? Case closed. Edit. I'm gonna vent for a second. I'll be honest with y'all. I tried to give her one final chance to talk things through. I told myself the minute she got hostile about it all, then I was done. Within five minutes of our final talk, quote unquote, I was being blamed for working too much. I quote, this isn't an effing trial. You weren't perfect either. I was practically screaming for help and you let me drown. I took the kids to daycare, cleaned the house all the time, picked them up after work, put them to bed, did all the cooking, did the dishes, took on a side hustle to give her a dream vacation which we went on just before her affair started, which is where a good few of y'all may know me from, the side hustle. The real kicker I didn't tell y'all about was when I went through her phone that first night, I saw messages from her and her mom talking about how she felt a disconnect, that I wasn't what she wanted anymore months before her affair began. Her mom highly encouraged her to sit me down and explain the way that she felt. She even told her mom that she did, even though she never did. Apparently sitting me down and having a talk was her going off and having an affair. I guarantee she will never find someone that will treat her the way that I did. Breakfast in bed, Saturday and Sunday. I woke up with the kids so that she could sleep in for years. She gave it all up for someone who can't even cover their own bills and still lives with mummy and daddy. The only thing he had that I didn't was more time because of a part-time job. Smokefrog asks, What race and religion are you that divorce is worse than financial and physical abuse and cheating? Also, you know what hurts me the most? One of the people that she cheated on you with was morbidly obese. For some reason, that stings the most. OP replies, they are Southern Baptists. I am not. Taiwan Bandit says, She is a toxic and now desperate woman trying to resurrect the house and financial security that she burned to the ground. Thankfully, you have family and friends to help out. Start to look forward to a life without her in it full time. 
appears that she doesn't even miss the kids. She's pathetic. Better to let the kids know in an age-appropriate way that mummy and daddy will no longer be together. Stay the course, OP. Count down the one-year requirement. You are not wrong. Quote, she responded with, You're right, marriage is based off trust, and if you don't trust me, then maybe we ought to call it quits. That's the only thing that OP's ex is right on. She wasn't even remorseful. She manipulated and gaslit him, and when she realized that it wasn't working, she decided to pull out all the tricks sexually to get him to stay. She's probably going to make the divorce difficult. Hopefully OP keeps powering through. Once reality kicks in for her and the divorce is finalized, she'll be back to trying love bombing and everything. Their difference in partners from a husband that treated her like gold to what we are told is an absolute loser will be too much for her. I've just got to say good on you OP for sticking to your guns, for seeing through all the bullshit and nonsense and lies, and actually getting this divorce on the road. She deserves the worst, you deserve the best. I hope she's happy with this absolute loser that she's decided to burn the marriage to the ground with because it doesn't look like a good life ahead for her right now, and <laughs> the fact that she doesn't want to see the kids as well is disgusting. It's like they're accessories that don't even matter to her in this case. Who is this person that she's mask-slipped and revealed herself to be, or what has she turned into and why did this happen? Hopefully this doesn't continue into the future and she doesn't make more shit happen to you through the divorce process and the time you have left to co-parent together. But I, I just hope that there isn't another update and that's the end of it. Am I the asshole here for wanting to reveal my affair partner's cheating to her husband? So I've been involved in an affair. Actually, my girlfriend slash partner has been having an affair with me for the last four months. I won't go into detail, but I feel horrible and disgusted. I've always hated cheating, and I never want anything good to come to cheaters. But now, I've gotten mixed up in it, and it's eating me alive. So, four months ago, I met this woman, she is 29, at my gym, and we pretty much connected instantly. Over the course of four months, we became a couple, went on many dates, and had sex plenty of times. I was a virgin before I met her. I never had a girlfriend or sex, and I really felt that life finally kicked in for me, and that things would get better. I'm 24, and before I met her, I always felt like a reject and a weirdo because of my lack of success in dating and relationships. The other day, by chance, I found out that she has a husband, and I wanted to bury myself on the spot. I felt so bad, I can't put it into words. She wanted to have sex after we had a date, but I lied and told her that I couldn't do it that day because I had something planned. I came home, and I was so ashamed of myself. I managed to find her husband on social media, and I've been going back and forth on wanting and how to reveal everything. I saved all of our chats, pictures, and I even had some receipts from our dinners. I talked to my mom about it, and she told me that since I managed to find him, and since I have evidence, I should inform him. My mom told me that he deserves to know, and if it were up to her, she would have revealed everything, but she told me that it's my decision to make. I feel like this woman played both me and her husband, and now I hate myself. In the comments, Arsenal7 says, Get tested for STDs. You have no idea how many partners she's had. If it were me, I would tell him. OP replies, Thank you for the advice. I'm going to do that. As for telling, I've already made the decision to inform her husband about her cheating. Hopefully, I won't be collateral damage in all of this. You shouldn't feel ashamed. You did nothing wrong. She lied by omission. You had no idea that you were her affair partner. She is the one that is at fault. I personally would tell him and let him know that she did not make you aware of her marital status, that she led you to believe that she was single. Also, I get the worry of collateral damage, but other than the gym, how are you connected? I'm wondering what you think will happen. Not the asshole. You are not a cheater, so don't feel bad about it. You were fooled, just like her husband is being fooled. Now, if you continue, then that's a different story. Let the husband know. It's the decent thing to do, and then block her everywhere, and perhaps change gyms. Changing gyms might not be necessary. I bet she'll change gyms as well after this comes to light. Watch them both change to the same gym? Martinism Murder says, 
I would message him with a correspondence between you two, but nothing overly graphic. Make sure he knows you had no idea and then block her everywhere. I'm curious, you said you actually found out, but how did you find out? You said that you found out by chance and she wanted to have sex after your date. Did she just drop it on you on your date? And OP says, no, she got a call and it said hubby with a heart emoji. Two of them were in the picture. OP on who initiated the relationship and if she knew that she was married. OP says, I didn't initiate sex. She did and she was going too fast for me. I have no relationship or sexual experience. She never said anything about being married or having a boyfriend or a husband. Oh my god, the way that my jaw dropped when you said hubby came up on the phone is insane. Surely she wasn't there when he saw the phone call, because if she was in the room or present when this was happening, you, you could hear a pin drop, I'd imagine. I, it'd be like a deer in the headlights. Definitely not the asshole here for wanting to reveal the affair partner's cheating to her husband. I feel like he deserves to know in this instance, come on. What is she going to do, like, come beat you up at the gym afterwards for ruining your relationship together? Like, ruining her infidelity? I, I, I want to know what you think the issue is. And now, on to the update. Short and straight to the point, I used a fake and anonymous account to send him details and some pictures. I also told him that I have more evidence that I would like to share. He didn't respond until yesterday, where he said that he wants to know more. Today I sent him everything and explained everything in detail. Turns out, he already suspected her of cheating, he just didn't have any proof. He wasn't angry or sad, he was just disappointed, a lot. He also thought that I would be older. He said that he doesn't blame me, as it wasn't my fault. He told me that he owes me big time because he wanted to hire somebody to find out if she was actually cheating, so I actually saved him both time and money. After I explained everything, he was mostly relieved and thanked me for helping him and asked if there was anything that he could do to repay me. I said that he should help somebody else and that will make us even. He thanked me, told me that I'm a good guy, and that was mostly it. He will file for divorce, in case anybody is wondering. I haven't heard from the affair partner for a few days now, and I'm pretty sure that he didn't tell her where he got all the proof from because she didn't call and yell at me. I blocked her on everything anyway after my talk with her husband, and it's time to move forward. Shitty experience from a first relationship, but what can you do? In the comments, Darth Feneth says, Bro, I am so proud of you. You did good, and I'm glad that he took it well. Couldn't be happier for this update. OP replies, He was so kind and nice, I felt so bad. I kept apologizing, but he kept saying he didn't blame me and that it wasn't my fault. You've got nothing bad to feel about. You had no way of knowing that she was lying when she told you she was single, and once you found out the truth, you ended it and informed her husband. Everything about the way that you handled this was both moral and sensible. That guy wasn't blowing smoke up your ass. He meant what he said when he thanked you and told you that this wasn't your fault. You should be proud of yourself for doing the right thing. OP could have used any number of excuses for not doing the right thing, but he stepped up, wishing nothing but the best for him in the next relationship. It's too bad that OP's first relationship experience was with a cheater, as it just tarnished the whole thing, and might cause OP issues when a new relationship develops. I'm just happy that the husband didn't blame OP for his wife's cheating, as some people do blame the unknowing affair partner, because like, if the affair partner does know the other person is married, then they are an asshole. I'm really proud of OP for doing the right thing, and also that the husband was blaming the right person. OP did not do anything wrong. He was also the victim in this case. After he found out, he told the husband. And yes, in cases where they knowingly have an affair with a married person, they are also an asshole. I've been in that situation. I was the other man in an affair. Found out when her husband called me yelling, and then his wife told me that we couldn't see each other anymore. It really sucks. Yeah, I'll never understand why people like husbands in those cases call them yelling. Because if you didn't know, how is it at all your fault? Like, you're taking your anger out on the wrong person, buddy can definitely understand in the heat of the moment where that emotion is coming from and why you just want someone to yell at, but yell at your cheating partner instead of the person they're cheating on, come on. 
Our next post is by user throw ra in her name, titled, Am I the asshole for overreacting to learning about the true fate of my little sister's remains? Trigger warning for child death in this one, guys. Just putting that out there. So my mother and father divorced when I was young. They had an oops baby together after my mum remarried, which rocked that marriage apart. The oops baby was my little sister. She died abruptly in an accident four years ago at only 14. You know how people say the firsts after a death are the hardest? They don't account for when there is no first to be had, when they should have been getting ready for a prom but never will. It is a completely different pain. My mum and I were talking about it. We were both drinking, and she slipped that my bit of ashes that I carry, I thought that were my sister's, were just regular ashes, burnt wood. She already poured out my sister's ashes without me or my brother in the plot that she bought with my stepdad. She couldn't fathom my rage, because to her, the sentiment and emotions are the important aspects, not that it's physically my sister. My anger is prompted by the lies and the fact that those sentiments and emotions are attached to something, not my little sister. And I had no idea that she cast her ashes on a plot that she wouldn't have cared about. I screamed at her to get out of my house, locking the door behind her and calling up my stepdad to pick her up. I threw the necklace out the window to the front lawn and then regretted it and tore it out of her hands when she picked it up. As she would say it, I made a scene and embarrassed her. I kept screaming and calling her a liar whenever she tried to explain herself or get back inside. I was threatening to call the cops on her when my stepdad finally showed up and took her away. He called me the next day and left a message saying that he wanted to talk about what happened and how he understands why I'm angry and hurt. He just wants to talk. But I need to talk to my mother too about this because she's a grieving mother. And my sister's death was a huge blow to the entire family, and everyone is trying to regain our bearings still, so some kindness is needed. All I can think of right now is my mum's heartbroken face as I ripped my necklace with my sister's ashes, quote unquote, out of her hands, or the way she turned away from me crying as my stepdad ushered her into the car. I called her names, I let my pain and rage take over me, but I can't get over the lies. Four years of thinking my necklace had my sister, of thinking that she was right by my heart, and it all came undone because my mum had too much to drink. How long would she have let me think this? How long would the lie continue? In the comments, Center of Chaos says, Yeah, your mother is grieving, but you, her very living child, are too. Having your mother lie to you about something important is going to get an emotional reaction. What you do is up to you, but I wouldn't let her frame this as embarrassing her or that she's a victim in any way. She lied about it. She got drunk and tattled on herself. These are the consequences of her own actions. The mum thought that that was going to be a cute little anecdote. What the hell kind of person does that kind of stuff? Casually just drops a bomb. OP says, It was an absolute mistake on her part that she even said it. We were talking about prom season and how hard it can be to be reminded of things that my sister would have loved. Then she started to say, I start crying before I even reach the cemetery sometimes. And she named it by name. I started flipping then and was like, what cemetery? Why that cemetery? In a sort of, why are we talking about cemeteries when we're talking about her way? I kept pushing her for an explanation and that is when the whole thing came out. A recurring theme that I see on Reddit is that the person that lied or started the problem, or was the reason, is claiming that somehow the person who was mad embarrassed them. No, they embarrassed themselves by their initial actions. Okay, I'm sure she's devastated by this loss, and that's understandable, but that's still not an excuse for lying about something this important, and even worse to then tell the truth and expect you to just be... Eh, it's okay. No worries. Not the asshole. Yeah, I had a ring made from my brother's ashes, ashes into glass, and could not even bring myself to scoop them out. The fact that my sister-in-law took the time and emotional trauma to send that to us, she is a saint. My niece was murdered at 14. It took me a year to receive her ashes. 
If I later found out that they were not hers, I would burn everything and everyone to the ground. Your reaction is valid. I am so, so, so sorry. Not the asshole. Oh my god, I am so sorry that happened. How horrific for you and your family. My heart goes out to you. Thank you. It has been a nightmare. When OP said that thing about prom, it gutted me because all my niece's friends are buying prom dresses right now and posting about it, and she should be doing it too. Like, I totally get where OP is at with her feelings and her grief, and I understand that she was literally robbed. It's just wrong. There was a girl a couple of years behind me in school. I didn't know her, but we knew a lot of the same people, and this kind of thing didn't happen in our rural area. She was kidnapped, assaulted, and murdered when she was walking home from her school bus stop. I always remembered her family and all of the things that they never got to do. So many of us grew up and then felt some sense of closure and relief when her killer was arrested 30 years later. To us, that was when we realized that living in BFE wasn't quite as safe as we thought it was, but her parents didn't just lose their innocence like we did, they lost their daughter, and a whole other future that went with it. They lost infinite possibilities of a full, rich lifetime. I'm so, so sorry for your loss, and theirs. Everyone was grieving though. How do you even justify throwing your daughter's ashes without her sibling's knowledge, and giving them wood ashes? Lies after lies! She took away from you guys, and had a chance to properly say goodbye and grieve. Now you're grieving all over again. Forgive me for saying this, and I hope it's not harsh, but it's like she killed your sister again, and you're back to square one. Now your sister's ashes are in some plot of land, and y'all didn't even know till now. I would not just be mad and hysterical, I'd go no contact after this bullshit. What are you supposed to do now? Kiss the plot of God knows where she's dumped your sister's ashes? The way she just chose a random plot to throw it to? I just can't. And she's the one who needs comfort? No, not the asshole. Was she being kind or thoughtful or considerate when she gave some random ash to replace your sister? Hell no. Yeah, these stories remind me a lot of what we're reminded of as kids, at least in my generation in Australia, was when Daniel Morecambe was abducted and killed and his body was not found for a very long time. And yeah, it, it appears it was like 20 or 30 years later that they did find the killer and they found some part of his remains. That's how I can relate to this story and I can't imagine going through this as the parents themselves but even more so with OP in this situation, to just have the ashes, you know, be wood ashes and not the actual sibling that you were told it was, there's just so many layers of betrayal and lies here. Definitely not the asshole for this one. I think the only thing you really can do is go to the plots where they are buried and add those ashes to the necklace instead. I, I don't know how you really make this situation like this right. Her reaction is just so piss poor, like... Genuinely, I am disgusted at how the mother is reacting here. What a piece of shit for doing all of this and then playing the victim. And now, on to the updates. I gave my mother an ultimatum of either telling my brother and father, or I will. She refused to because you reacted so horribly, and she told me not to tell because you are doing this to hurt me and you're just gonna hurt them. So I told them. I sat my dad and brother down and explained that the necklaces didn't have the right ashes in them. I've never seen my dad break like that, and I've never heard my brother scream at me like that. He was angry that I knew before him and didn't immediately tell him because this is shit you tell me. You needed to tell me. We tell each other everything. But he started crying and apologizing to me, admitted that he's just so mad about what mum did, and he can't handle it. So I guess that's clearly something else me and my brother share. We get overwhelmed initially before cooler heads prevail. My dad looked gutted, but he was clearly trying to piece himself back together. He said a lot of the same things that other people had said to me on my other post. We can go get some of the dirt from the plot where she was scattered, the necklace has the meaning that we attribute to it, and she is still with us even if her body hasn't physically been with us. I feel bad because some of it my mum said, i.e. the bit about the necklace being important even without her ashes in it, 
but I was able to accept that much easier from him. Maybe because he didn't lie to me for four years and drop a bomb on me out of nowhere because I pulled apart a lie? He held my brother and I as we cried, and he apologized for the pain, and he said that it wasn't fair that I had to be the adult when my mother should have told us a lot sooner. Dad's gonna try to talk to my stepfather to try to find the plot because my mum has been refusing to talk to us anymore, not answering messages or picking up the phone. Her social media has even gone dark. He's going to find out where the plot is and go to the sites. I don't know if I could do it if it were up to me. It just feels like the final bit of proof that this effed up nightmare is real and my sister is mixed with dirt and rocks and grass of an unmaintained and unvisited plot. My mum and I always had some issues, but that's normal. This is worse than anything, and we had a rough patch where I came out that we didn't even talk, but we mended fences after. I can't see me ever forgiving her. Not with how she dropped this on me, blamed me for my reaction, and left me to do what she should have done. To top it off, she won't even show the decency to explain why, or even talk to me. When we were discussing cremation, it was agreed that we would all get a necklace with the ashes. My mind keeps going over things that just didn't add up fully, times she almost slipped, or things that make complete sense now. She almost left behind her necklace on a trip and didn't freak out like I would have, because she knew where my sister was the whole time. She volunteered to be the one to separate the ashes and gave dad the rest, quote unquote. I assume those ashes are the same as ours, fake. God, this whole thing just makes me want to curl up in a hole and never see the light of day again. I've been on and off crying all week without being able to stop or just so angry that I could scream. In the middle of my damn workday, and suddenly I'm rushing to the bathroom to hide the fact that I'm breaking all over again because I can't stop my thoughts? I quit smoking after my sister died, but I picked it right back up again. My dad's been calling me every day to check in on me and remind me how much he loves me and how much my brother loves me. I think he's afraid. My brother has come over each day since the talk with his girlfriend to make sure that I eat something. I don't know how to end this post. I feel lost and like I don't know anything anymore. I feel like a burden because my dad and brother are both dealing with the revelation too, but they're clearly thinking of me and checking in on me. I'm going to look into grief counselling, but the therapist I saw after my sister died isn't practicing anymore, and my insurance isn't accepted by a lot of therapists. I try to remind myself that my little sister wouldn't have minded so much becoming woven into a tapestry of grass and flowers, and that I can visit her once we know where she was cast, and make sure that her sight is always beautiful. Thank you to everyone that helped me, and shared their own perspectives and stories. I really appreciate it. In the comments, Miss Platplap says, You mentioned she said the cemetery's name when she tattled on herself? Can you call and ask about the plot? It's probably under your mother's or your sister's name. Then you can visit and not have to go through your mother at all. OP says, It's my mother and stepfather's plots. If trying through my stepfather fails, I'll try that. I didn't think that I could just call up and say, Is there an empty plot section for this so-and-so family? But it's worth trying. You absolutely can. I know from experience that the cemetery managers don't care about family drama and will just provide info. All you'd need to do is ask which plot the XYZ family plot slash plots are. If they want to know why, then just tell them directly. A family member's ashes may have been scattered there, and you just want to visit. OP says, thank you so much. In a strange way, it's nice to know that I won't need to break it all down and explain. I can just ask. I have worked in death care professionally as a monument maker for the last five years, if the cemetery has someone looking after it, if it's run by the city or a private individual, they typically have to be notified of any and all burials, including spreading of ashes. They maintain very extensive records in order for families to put stone down and to avoid accidentally opening a used grave for another individual. Now, I will also say that this does not prevent people from scattering ashes without notifying the cemetery. That definitely happens. You can either ask about the plot deeded to the family, but it will and should be listed under a lot party owner, which is the person who originally purchased the plot, or plots. If that doesn't work, then you can ask about your sister directly and provide her dates and name. 
If your mother reported the spread, they usually can provide a map and exact location of the gravesite, at least in my experience. I'll end this with cemetery rules, regulations, and operations vary by state. I have knowledge of the rules in Ohio, some of Virginia's and North Carolina's in the US specifically due to family passings and work. I truly hope that this helps in your case, and please, if you think there's some knowledge I could have that could help you, feel free to reach out to me. My condolences for your loss, and I'm so sorry that this has happened to you. OP replies, Thank you so much for the information and sympathy. I feel like there are so many unanswered questions and holes, and a lack of information with very few means of getting the answers that I need, so any little bit helps. I don't know if my mother reported spreading her ashes, but maybe she did. I'm hoping so. The Queen of Disco says, I would not be able to forgive this. There would literally be nothing my mother could say that would make me forgive her. I get emotional just thinking about it. What a selfish, thoughtless, and cruel thing to do. I'm trying to respond with grace, but I want to know what kind of person his mum is. Is this grief? Or has grief just emphasised an innate self-centeredness that is just who she is? First the lies, and then the refusal to deal with the consequences of her actions. Man, alcohol in these kinds of stories feels like straight-up truth serum. If drunken confessions weren't a thing, half of the posts on this subreddit wouldn't exist. This is one of the reasons why I absolutely refuse to drink any alcohol during work-related events. My feelings about some of my shitty colleagues and work culture may just slip out. Am I the asshole for not attending the wedding of my cousin and my ex-boyfriend? I, 32 female, was engaged to marry Travis, 33 male, but a couple of weeks before the wedding was supposed to take place, he said that he didn't want to get married. I asked him if he was cheating and he said no. He told me that most of his friends were already marrying or starting families, so he thought that it was time to settle down, but he had just realized that he didn't want to do it. Suffice to say, the wedding was cancelled, and that was the end of our relationship. It's been about a year since that happened. Things haven't exactly been great, but I've managed. Well, some days ago, I received an invitation to the wedding of my cousin Taylor, 26 female. Imagine my surprise when I read it and saw that my ex-fiancé was the groom. I'd only seen them barely interact during family meetings. I hadn't noticed any clue that pointed to anything happening between the two of them all this time. Some info about my cousin. She's what other people would call a free spirit. She doesn't have a conventional job. She works as an artist. She dyes her hair in unusual colors, sometimes blue, sometimes green for example, and dresses extravagantly. Once she wore a white robe, another time she wore a black leather jacket and spiked boots. She says that she doesn't like following society's rules, and that she only follows her own code. Immediately, I called my parents. I asked them if they'd known something about Taylor's relationship with Travis. To summarize, yes they did. They hadn't intended on telling me because they figured out that there would be no positive outcome to it, but they also made it clear that they expected me to come to the wedding anyway in order to show support to my family. At this point, I lost it, and shouted that they were delusional if they believed that I would go to the wedding of my cheating liar ex and his manic pixie dream girl. They said that I can't keep holding on to my hatred and resentment forever, and that I need to let go. But I hung up. My extended family has been blowing up my phone since then, saying that I'm a bad person if I don't attend. Right now, I feel so confused, betrayed, and disappointed. I'm no longer sure if I'm being irrational or not, so I think it might be best to ask for an outside point of view. Am I the asshole? In the comments, Jersey Girl 2468 says, Not the asshole. Your family is being ridiculous. They should have told you that your ex-fiancé was involved with your cousin, especially when they got engaged, and that they're out of line expecting you to show up and smile because family. Family goes both ways. You're family too, and they should have told you what was happening. I would make it clear that you were not holding on to anger and resentment. You have moved on, and wouldn't have wanted to be married to a guy who would do that anyway, whether you feel that way or not, or are still angry or not. Don't let them paint you that way. But you won't be attending the wedding, and it's inappropriate for anyone to ask you to do so. 
I'm curious what the family's desired endgame was of not telling OP about this relationship. Surely she would have found out somehow. Was there plan for her to eventually show up to Thanksgiving dinner and see her ex there with her cousin? Maybe the family was hoping the ex and the cousin broke up before OP ever found out that they were involved. Weird all around. There was never going to be a good endgame. Odds are good they intended to bulldoze OP to just let bygones be bygones because she is the more reasonable one. Yeah, that sure worked out well. Sarcasm? Not the asshole. Tell your family that maybe if they'd been honest with you, you could have processed this and gotten over it, but since they withheld this information from you and it got sprung onto you like this, you feel perfectly entitled to take the time that you deserve to process and get over the shock and horror of not only being lied to by your ex, but also being treated this way by your less than supportive family. Edit to add, but do it calmly. Based on what OP said, there is a very good chance this marriage is doomed. The cousin plays by her own rules, and he is a cheater and a liar. He won't change, and will cheat again. The cousin will get bored with him. The family sucks. We knew, but we didn't think it would help you to know. Surprise! Now get over it. I have kids, and I can't imagine siding with a nibbling over my own kid in a case like this. If family supports family, like they want OP to do, why did they not support OP? Not the asshole. Your family is whack. Sending you an invite is a slap in the face. A year ago, you were steps away from marrying this guy. Then in a finger snap, you found out that he was cheating on you with your cousin and he's marrying her. You are not hateful and your parents are assholes for supporting the cousin over their daughter and putting appearances over your heartbreak and betrayal. I'm so sorry, OP. I really hope you don't go and instead take time to heal and process this. Hugs. Back up to the post, there is an edit to add, OP says, Holy shit, I can't believe it. I go away for a few hours and find so many comments. To clear up some questions, the main reason that I doubted was because my family is tight-knit and traditional, and my parents raised me to believe that family comes before everything else. But y'all helped me realize that my feelings are valid. Thank you, everyone. Isn't it so refreshing that these people that are growing up in such conservative and tight-knit traditional families have some resources like the internet here to help them out, to clear their head, to tell them that no, what your family did is really messed up and you do deserve better. Because yeah, sometimes it really is hard to see through all the fog of the bullshit that gets thrown at you, the propaganda that these idiots will just continue to spew. You were cheated on, and your family does not care about that. They just care about their own feelings and uh, how they look to the rest of society, it would seem. If I was in your shoes, I wouldn't go to that wedding. Like, Why would you? It'd be so hurtful for no reason. I'd also be screaming at my family if they were to hide something like that from me. How disrespectful of them. Not the asshole. And now, on to the update. Hi, it's me again. Thanks to everyone who commented on my first post. Some people asked for an update, and here you have it. I've read all of your comments, and I've got to say, the ones who gave me tips on how to be petty made me laugh. But after thinking about it, I decided simply to not attend the wedding. I'll also be distancing myself from my parents and extended family, at least for a while, for the former, indefinitely for the latter. I also told my friends about the whole situation, and they were even more pissed off than some of you. I told them about the suggestion that some commenters made about going on vacation during the week of the wedding, and we've already started making plans. Something else happened in the last few days. I received a call from Travis. He asked me if we could meet and talk. I know that it was probably stupid of me, but I accepted. We met in a public place, and I told him I wanted to know exactly what was going on between him and Taylor. This is what he told me. First, he made sure to emphasize that he had never cheated on me. I'm not sure if I believe him, but I let him talk. He told me that he too felt bad about our relationship's end, that on a night out, he just happened to end up in the same place as my cousin. They started talking, one thing led to another, and he proceeded to have a middle-aged crisis with her. The only reason that he's getting married to her is because she's pregnant, and he was afraid that she would just run away and he would never get to meet his child. After that talk, we went our separate ways. He wished me good luck, and I said the same. 
As soon as I came back home, I blocked his number. So at the end of the day, I'm left with more questions than answers, but whatevs, that's no longer my problem. Anyway, this is it. I don't think I'll be posting in this account again. Once again, thank you for your support when I needed it. In the comments, Royal Leoki says, Still not the asshole, and good for you for taking the classy but dignified route. I also would suspect that he cheated. The fact that he'd tell you it's a midlife crisis thing and he's only marrying her because she's pregnant makes him seem even more unsavory. Bullet dodged. Best wishes. Yeah, getting married for the sole sake of her being pregnant is a recipe for disaster, and I feel like it'll get even worse when OP moves on and marries someone else. Travis is going to be furious about it, and the cousin is going to be furious about Travis being furious. We'll make it clear that she was a rebound, and that he wasn't marrying her because he actually likes her. It's going to be a huge clusterfuck. OP should stay well away from everyone. A middle-aged crisis at 33? that led him to get a 26-year-old pregnant? And all the family, including your parents, knew they were having some sort of relationship? OP, congratulations on having that guy out of your life and your future. I feel a bit concerned for that kid. Mum being a free spirit who is pregnant and married at 26, and a dad who just married her to make sure she doesn't run off, doesn't seem like it's gonna go well as a supportive family for the kid. It is 100% going to be a clusterfuck. Getting married because she got pregnant is almost always a recipe for disaster. Um, I wouldn't believe for one second that they weren't sleeping together while you guys were still together. Travis is just trying to not look like the bad guy and save his reputation. Don't forget, your cousin doesn't play by society's rules, so having an affair with her cousin's fiancé would just be a regular Tuesday for her. Regardless, your parents... Ask them how your cousin put you first while she was screwing your fiancé. Tell them to have fun with their family and that you are no longer a part of their mess. Who are these people that blow up phones? I'm genuinely sure that it does happen, but if someone told me, Sally won't go to Susan's wedding because Susan's marrying Sally's ex, I'm not going to blow up her phone. I'll reach out the normal amount that I already did or just say, hey, heard you ain't going to the wedding. Makes sense why. Hope you're doing well. Who the hell are these crazies? Well, I mean, if 20 people all reach out a normal amount, but all of them do it at the same time, your phone would still be blowing up. Quote, They said that I can't keep holding on to my hatred and resentment forever, and that I need to let go, but I hung up. Maybe OP can't hold on to it forever, but she learnt about it that day. For Christ's sake, let her be mad for a minute. No kidding, right? She can't pine away for her ex forever. Grief technically has no timeline, but there is a point where it can become inappropriate. Which I do get, but this is a brand new grief to a whole new effed up situation. I can't believe how insensitive her parents and the rest of her family are being. Does the cousin even care? Why does OP need to be there? Even if the cousin supposedly does care, why do the cousin's feelings supersede OP's? On top of that, I would be furious that the entire family knew, including my parents, and no one told me. A little warning might be nice? If everyone knew nothing good would come of me knowing about this, then why let me find out like this? And demand then that I attend? Their logic makes zero sense. I'm getting a bit pissed off when you put it like that because... It just seemed like the family never wanted this to ever come up and never wanted to have to talk about it, so they let that ticking time bomb count down to zero. Thank God you're out of there, OP. I can't imagine ever being in a situation like that. I feel like he's lying to you. I feel like he did cheat. How did he not cheat in that situation? How are you getting married and having a kid within one year of... Oh, I don't understand. Ah, uh, I am so glad my life is not like that. Anyway guys, let me know what you think about this one down in the comments below. What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? I'd love to know. Am I the asshole for divorcing my wife over getting a massage? My soon-to-be ex-wife and I are both in our late 30s. We've been together 12 years, married for 10. We are in a dead bedroom. It was totally dead for 6 months before I filed for divorce. It was on life support slash ICU for five to six years before that. We both wanted to be younger parents and both wanted two kids. 
We conceived our daughter almost immediately after getting married. When she was six months old, we started trying to have the second child. It never happened. After three years, we started seeing fertility specialists and found out we both have pretty serious reproductive issues. The doctor told us our daughter was nothing short of a miracle and said that it was against all odds that we not only conceived, but carried to term. It was after this that the sex life began to seriously decline. Initially, I thought that it was just the pain of finding out and knowing that we wouldn't be able to afford the fertility options and figured that it would get better over time. It never did. It only got worse. Five years ago, I would say that we had sex 15 to 20 times that year. In 2023, we had sex three times. I have tried everything to improve this, spicing things up, talking, suggested counseling. I more than pull my weight around the house. We both work and work basically the same hours. I'm telling you this because the usual stuff that I read on Reddit about how the wife does it all is not even close to true. Over time, I have grown more and more resentful. The thing that makes me the most resentful is she knows that I have a high libido and she just doesn't care. I, on the other hand, know that she loves to be rubbed on and massaged and never took that from her. I probably rub on her 325 times a year. Almost every night, I rub her calves, shins, ankles, and feet. Four to five nights a month, I will go big and do neck, shoulder, back, butt, hamstrings, quads, shins, calves, ankles, and feet. I noticed that doing the big massages was the best way to get sex, as she was more likely to allow me to do the foreplay things that I know work on her, if I had already done this prep. I did them more often a few years ago, but now not as much. The success rate was never that great, maybe 20% of the time, but in the last two years, we are definitely in the single digits. When we hit the four months of absolutely no sex, I decided that I wasn't rubbing on her ever again. It only took three days for her to notice, and she asked me to. I told her no, and I got angry. I said, why should I when you don't give an F about what I want? Obviously not my finest moment, and a huge argument followed. Things got ice cold at home, but I wasn't giving in. I was tired of all of it. A few weeks ago, she told me, fine, I'll just start seeing a professional masseuse. I said, then I'll start seeing sex workers. She said that was cheating. I said, fine, I won't, but you will not get a massage from anyone else. That is also cheating. She said I was being ridiculous, and I said, no, it's being touched in an intimate way by another. If I can't have that, then neither can you. And I swear to effing God, if you do, I will file for divorce that day. The following weekend, she went to get her nails done. I know how long it takes for her to get her nails done. She came back almost an hour and a half later than I expected. She didn't say anything, just acted normal. I got on a credit card app on my phone, and sure enough, there was a $95 charge to the goddamn massage person in the same strip mall as the nail place. I lost it, and when I did, so did she. I think we both let out years of frustration on each other. True to my word though, I called a divorce lawyer on Monday. The only part that upset me was my lawyer said that based on these circumstances, I couldn't list infidelity as the reason for divorce and had to go with irreconcilable differences. Anyway, she's been telling people that we're divorcing because she got a massage. Since then, I have a number of family members and friends call me and say that I'm an asshole. Some of them, even when I tell them my real reasons, still think I'm an asshole and that my reasons aren't good enough. Personally, I think getting a massage when told not to is plenty of reasoning. So am I the asshole here? Personal note, I reread this and I know it comes off as angry, but I am angry. Angry at myself for wasting so many years. But I'm also angry because this was just the ultimate F you. She just went and did it anyway and didn't even try to hide it. Literally went to the same place next to the nail salon and used her credit card which I pay. Like I wasn't going to see the charge. In the comments, Laughing Dragon 77 says, The last straw is always something small and stupid, but it's the latest in a long line of hurts. I know that's a kind of obvious thing, but this was very well said. Yup, OP is probably getting blowback because he seems to be exclusively using this as his reason. 
He needs to explain the full story like he did here. Yeah, I mentioned this in another comment yesterday, but you gotta separate the what happened from the what hurts. What happened is that she got a massage, but what hurts is all the long trail of shit that came before, coupled with doing something that he expressly asked her not to do, all while trying to hide it. You didn't divorce because she got a massage. Yeah, I don't blame OP at all for wanting to end the marriage, for the reasons listed at the beginning of the post. I divorced my wife because we were experiencing challenges, and she was not willing to put effort into fixing them, is 100% legitimate. But getting a massage is the same as cheating is one of the most ridiculous takes that I've heard in my life. Camel meets straw, I guess. It's really that he stopped doing something so she'd be forced to compromise, and instead, she just went and got that thing for herself. The massage was just the last final blow to this already dead marriage. Just divorce and let it die already. OP says, in the process. You're not divorcing over a massage. It is the tiny straw that broke the camel's back. When people divorce, it's almost never one thing. It's more a death of a thousand paper cuts. I really think that you need a lot of space to heal and get on those apps now that you're a free man. Yeah, just a very much messy situation all around. And I don't think that you're the asshole for divorcing your wife over a massage, OP. I do believe you. I feel like you tried your best to revive the relationship, but she was unwilling to put the effort in. She was very much happy to keep the status quo and not have sex anymore. You're more than in your rights to leave and walk out of this one. I respect that you tried to go to marriage counseling and you did try to repair it with communication. She was unwilling to communicate with you and she kind of backed you into a corner with this one, I feel like. I blame her for not communicating, not being forthright about her feelings with you and then just going behind your back. I, I don't like what she's done at all. I also trust that you're a reliable narrator in this one. I understand that you couldn't be, but I take you at face value because you give me good vibes. And now, on to the updates. While this is not official by any means at this point, I'll take it as a positive. Soon to be ex asked me to meet yesterday to hash out some details of the divorce, and it was actually pretty productive. We agreed on a 50-50 custody arrangement. Basically, one week there, one week here. Becomes two weeks during summer break. We each keep our own retirements, splitting the savings 60-40 her favor. Each keep our primary vehicle. I made a huge concession on the house. It was my idea. I want our child to grow up in that house. Ours was a three bedroom with a finished basement and a nice yard. I don't want her to live in a pair of two bedroom apartments. This is important to me. I'll be paying a housing alimony each month to offset some costs since my rent and projected utilities etc are much lower than the mortgage, utilities and upkeep. We did agree on some stipulations that would end that. One, if another adult should move in, i.e. a boyfriend or new husband, my obligation ends immediately. Two, my obligation ends when our daughter moves out or turns 22, whichever comes first. And three, there's a bunch of different scenarios that we talked about in terms of splitting the house if she wishes to sell it. I wouldn't bore you with all of that, but basically, as long as I continue to make the alimony payments, I'll get 40% to the time of sale or a buyout. I'm turning all of this over to my lawyer this week, and he'll write it up and send it to her lawyer. While she definitely had a you are beneath me vibe during our meeting, I'm happy this doesn't look like it'll be an ugly divorce, as I was very worried that it would be. I assume our daughter is the motivating factor for her sudden amicable attitude. In the comments, no locksmith 5894 says, you won't know how ugly it will be until she's in the courtroom and her attorney is doing all the talking. Good luck. Ain't that the truth? Me and my ex-wife had everything worked out to the T until the lawyers started talking. I would honestly be so mad at my lawyer if I had a lawyer who pulled something like that. To be fair, my lawyer started it, but hers ran with it like it was the Super Bowl. My lawyer tried to pull a sneaky that I didn't ask for and it put her on the defensive and she hired a very opportunistic lawyer. Yes, that's definitely the thing with lawyers. One side makes a move, the other side will absolutely escalate. Yeah, her new lawyer telling her they could get the prenup thrown out on like, no grounds? He definitely cost me and her both 10k plus with that neat little trick, lol. 
We laugh about it now because we're on good terms, but oof. Mustang1967 twice says, Depends on how much you're helping pay the house bills, and make sure she can't redo the loan or take out equity. I would make an appointment and talk to a lawyer to look over a few things. I understand the house thing, but what I learned is, no matter how much one party helps the other party, by taking less, the other side still thinks they got screwed over, and will be resentful, and try to screw them over every time. OP says, I'm not going into specifics because I'm not going to share our incomes, costs, etc. But basically, it makes an approximate average of monthly cost between both places. Very basic example with totally fake numbers. If her monthly costs are 200 and mine are 100, I pay her 50. Also, this is a set in stone amount, not variable. So if she's going to crank the heat to 90 all winter, that's going to be her problem, not mine. Also, things like refinance, equity, etc. That was the stuff that I said that I wouldn't bore everyone with. There will be protections for me unless she wants to buy me out completely, which I told her that I'd leave on the table indefinitely. You better get in writing that if she moves a dude or a partner in, you get the house, and any revenue that you get from it. Get it in writing. OP says, yeah, that will be in writing. It'll actually be any adult. Like if her female cousin moves in, same result. I mean, we are getting divorced. This isn't a temporary separation. I expect she'll start to date at some point sooner or later. This is a story of two people not communicating. In the end, they both laid out frustrations from years of not communicating. I'm wondering what it is she felt the entire time that she was resentful about. I don't see it as that. At least, as long as OP was truthful, it sounds like he tried, and she didn't. The massages sold me on that because those aren't an easy thing to give every single night. And after years, he finally blew over something stupid. He was trying so he could get some. At no point did he ask is this what you want or bring up conversation about how she felt or what was going on. I'm sure at some point she realized that he has a motive for this and didn't say anything either. I mean, it was all blank silence from what I read. No one talking, just guessing from his side without asking, and then silence from hers. That we can tell. There's always two sides. Our next post is by user PaymentGrouchy1336, titled, Am I the asshole here for carrying treats in my pocket in order to talk to a guy? I, 20 female, have a neighbor, 22 to 24 male. I have a crush on him. I am so shy though, and I struggle with initiating. I noticed that the day that I was carrying a pepperoni stick for a snack to eat on the way to my workout class, his dog approached me enthusiastically and was sniffing me, and this prompted a small but very cute conversation with the neighbor. So now, I carry it when I want my neighbor to run into me. It's worked three times thus far, and he doesn't know it's because I have the treat on me. Am I the asshole here for this? Edit. Clarification for those who need it. Don't worry, I have never given his dog any food. I know not to give a dog food without asking the owner. Hopefully I can treat both boys soon, and as requested, I'll update here. Thank you so much for all the lovely advice and encouragement. In the comments, Unlucky Fall says, For a second, I thought that you were giving him the treats, lol. Was gonna say that he probably thinks that you're an angel, not an asshole. And OP says, <laughs> maybe I should make him some. I'll have to figure out what he likes using these encounters first. I'd totally just use that as initiation. Give the dog a treat and then search in your pockets and be all like, oh, sorry, I've got nothing for you. How about a coffee sometime? Or I can just bring you a stick as well. And OP says, you, my friend, are genius. OP, you are one smooth operator, not the asshole. This is some fairy tale shit for a guy, to be honest. OP says, Really? I never knew how it would be from a male perspective. So that makes me very happy. If you like him, just ask him out already. Not the asshole. The way to a man's heart is through his dog. So true, and they are great wingmen. Used to borrow my mum's dog for weekend sleepovers. I was also the primary dog sitter for the entire family. I never said that it was my dog. We got him when I was a teenager, so he kinda was, but I didn't lead anyone on. We'd hit several dog parks, and I nabbed a few dates out of it. 
It also helped that he was an absolute puppy of a black lab for all of his around 15 years that we had him. A 100 pound puppy, but he was just so engaging with people and other animals. My dog was a greyhound, and while he looked impressive, he was very aloof at the dog parks, and could be a bit of the fun police when other dogs would play fights. His big ass would just walk over there and stand in between them. I thought he was going to kill a Rottweiler that tried mounting him several times. That owner sucked. And now, on to the update. I received a lot of helpful advice, and so much encouragement. Here is what I did. I bought dog jerky for my neighbor's dog. Don't worry, I asked my neighbor before I gave it. I also made it very clear, while talking to the dog, that I went out and bought this treat just for him, which resulted in my neighbor saying, you're so sweet, but I don't know if he deserves it today. And then he told me a funny story about his dog misbehaving. Now, I had practiced my segue line a million times in my apartment, but I got so nervous and everything went blank for a second. I told myself if he gets going, that I won't ask him out today, but he seemed to be in no hurry and didn't disengage. So I told him what someone here suggested I say. I can't remember the exact words, sorry, but I said something like, I don't have anything for you though. Would you like to walk together and get a coffee? My treats? And he said he'd love to. He also said that he's been wanting to ask me, but I always seem to be in a rush. I am never in a rush. I just get shy and terminate the interaction so I can escape my uncomfortable and nervous feelings. This made me realize that I was giving him a different impression than I intended. We walked to the coffee shop and I ordered my coffee and his coffee. Lol, he didn't let me pay. I tried to insist and he told me he only agreed to get me to come with him. He never intended to let me pay. We got our coffee and talked and walked. Two hours went by. I was encouraged by commenters to be direct, so I ended up telling him once I felt a bit more warmed up in the conversation that I think he's handsome and that I've had a crush on him since I first saw him. His reaction was so priceless. He got a little shy, I think, because he looked away briefly after I said it, only for a moment though, while saying, oh wow, you just made my week. He was smiling. Also, his ears turned a little red. Or maybe it was the cold air, but I want to believe it was what I said. He told me that he has somewhere to be this evening, but he would like to see me again. We decided on a day and a time. We exchanged contact info and added each other on Instagram. We've been talking on the phone and texting ever since. We decided on a museum date plus dinner. When I got home, he texted me that he really likes me and is looking forward to get to knowing me better. He said my shyness is adorable, and some other compliments followed. I was so giddy. One of the biggest things I learned from the comments on my original post is that men love it when women make the first move, and they love to be complimented and approached first. I mostly just wanted to share this update because something positive happened, and I highly recommend this meet cute technique, especially to girls like me, whose shyness can unintentionally come as cross as being closed off. Also, Redditors on the original post take credit for coming up with the term meat cutes. It was not me. Edit, I haven't told him about the pepperoni tactic yet. I think it's best to save that for the real date. Depending on how that goes, I'll tell him. In the comments, Grim Trick says, I'm glad it worked out. Traditionally, for decades, the men had to do everything to court a woman. We don't normally receive compliments and are always told to man up and never cry and all of that. I'm only 41, but that's how it was when I was younger too. We have emotions of all kinds too. As a man, we absolutely love when a woman comes to us and is direct. If there's one thing we hate, it's women who try and drop hints. We will never get those hints. And on the off chance we do get the hint, it hits us 20 years later in the middle of the night. <laughs> Lol. Good for you, and I hope it all works out. OP says, This was so true. Because when he said that I always seemed in a rush, he basically was telling me it seemed like I was someone who would not be interested in being asked out, and maybe he even thought that I had a boyfriend. All the while, this could not have been further from the truth. I thought I was giving hints. He didn't get any of them, lol. Yup, we don't see the hints, because many women make these hints up in their head. There is no universal, I like you, do you like me, hint. 
Contrary to what TV has told us for decades, if a woman is interested in a man and she doesn't say, hi, do you want to go on a date with me? We will not get that in any other way. And at the same time, women have to know that we also won't just all walk up to a woman and ask her either. If whichever person wants to date just asked outright, the world would be a far better and less stressful place. Imagine all of the relationships that never happened, all because one or both parties were too shy to just ask someone. All those stories about long lost love could have been solved with one, hi, can we go out, sentence? Last Nerve 12 says, way to go. I knew you could do it. I asked my husband out first. You know how I did it? I looked his number up in the phone book. <laughs> yes, I'm old. Called when I knew that he was working and left a message asking him out for coffee. I was working the night shift in the ER that same night and there he was. He was a corrections officer and was there with an inmate. When I saw him, I ran to the other section of the ER. I finally talked to him and told him I left him a message. He asked me what the message was, and I told him he'll find out when he got home. He told me he could find out now. I asked him not, but the sob went and listened to the message. He came back and found me, leaned over, and whispered in my ear, Anytime, I'll call ya. He came back after work to bring me a coffee, and we've been together ever since. So, you never know, this could be it for you. I'm so excited for you, and I don't even know you. Sorry I'm such a sap. And OP replies, Your story is what dreams are made of. I might actually tear up. Emotions this weekend are high. I do want to scale down my feelings a little though, in case it doesn't work out. But so far, I am really, really hopeful. I always, always, always wanted an organic encounter. It's been so hard with dating app culture. This is the best thing to happen to me all year. Am I the asshole for sabotaging my husband's relationships? In my country, arranged marriages are very common, and this was how I, 24 female, got married with Jason, 24 male. Note that I said arranged marriages, not forced marriages. An arranged marriage is basically when your family plays matchmaker with you and someone else, but it isn't forced. It's important to say that I never wanted to get married, and am for sure placed somewhere in the ace spectrum, because sex was never something important to me. But I knew Jason since we were kids, and he was always nice to me, so I accepted to spend some time with him and see where it would go. Turns out that Jason and I had a lot in common. Our country is pretty religious, but neither of us saw that much importance in religion and just pretended to our families to not cause problems. We are both more on the introvert side and don't like crowds or big family reunions. When I told him about my feelings about sex and sexuality, he was sweet and understanding. We ended up becoming good friends, and it was obvious the idea of marrying each other seemed appealing for us. So, we got married two years ago. We made a deal to be basically good friends who were married, to not have sex, and to sleep in different rooms. He was allowed to sleep with whoever he wanted since he was not getting this from me. Everything was perfectly fine. Our families, however, really started to pressure us to have children this last year. Since this was so important to them, we agreed to, well, try. But first I asked him to make an STI exam since he had his fair share of casual sex, and even though he reassured me that he always used protection, I wouldn't feel safe otherwise. After the exam showed he was clean, we had our first time together and it was great. Way better than I could ever imagine. After that, he noticed that I liked it and asked if sex was in the equation of our relationship now. I said yes. This was a few months ago, and since then, we've been having sex pretty regularly, but we also started to spend more time together outside of that, and I think my feelings of friendship for Jason are starting to change. Not only that, but I started to feel jealous of his casual relationships, especially his affair with this girl Anna, 20s female, who he's been seeing pretty regularly for the past few months. I'm scared if he starts to fall in love with her because he always speaks highly of her, and he seems to like her. So, I kinda started to sabotage his dates with her and the other girls, in a way. I pretended to have headaches, to feel sick or sad, or any other excuse so that he has to stay with me instead of go and see them. I know it's childish, and maybe I should just talk to him about it, but I'm so scared that he doesn't feel the same way, and things get weird between us. 
It's not like we can escape each other. Am I the asshole? I think in a way, it's a little bit of an asshole move to not just speak directly to him. I do think it's a little bit childish in this situation, like, you're literally married and you have rules set up, you can agree to change those rules, OP. You're scared that he doesn't feel the same way and things get weird between you? If you continue to sabotage the dates with him and the other girls, that's going to make things weird, isn't it? It's going to cause friction, it's going to cause fights. I think it's better if you just tackle this head on and get a clear understanding from the both of you as to where this relationship goes. Does it continue with both of you guys exclusively being monogamous or does it break up because he doesn't want to be monogamous? So for that, because you're not communicating properly, I'm going to go with you're the asshole for this one. And now on to the update. OP here, the responses here were very enlightening, although some of you should probably learn how to be kinder to others. Not my fight to have anyway, but I listened to your advice and talked to Jason yesterday. It went... well, it went great. It really made me wonder why I thought this wasn't an option. He actually knew that I was trying to sabotage his dates, but it didn't matter that much since he was thinking about stopping with them anyway. In fact, he told me he already told the women that he was seeing that he wanted to stop going out with them around two weeks ago. I apologized anyway, but he thought that it was cute and said that I'm a terrible liar. I asked why he didn't talk about it either, and he said he felt that I needed some time to reach the point that I would feel ready for this conversation. Most importantly, he said he always loved me, that he accepted our early dynamic because he knew that it would be hard for me to find someone who would understand and respect my relationship with sex in our culture. And he's right. I don't think people even know what an asexual or a demisexual person is here. And I think people would mostly see it as some sort of mental illness or deviation. So he wanted to at least be able to give me protection and companionship on my own terms. He was over the moon that I'm in love with him too, but he assured me that it would also be fine for him if it never happened, and I believe him. I also showed him this post, and he found it really funny that I was able to open up to a bunch of strangers before talking to him. It was a little embarrassing, but I wanted to be completely honest with him. Also, answering the people who asked if we wanted to have children, or if we were only doing this because of our family's pressure, we talked about it before starting to have a sexual relationship, and yes, we want to have children. Now that everything is out in the open, we're even more excited for that. Thank you for the advice anyway. Some of you were harsh, but I needed a wake-up call, I guess. In the comments, Matcha Magpie says, A reminder to adults in relationships that you need to talk to each other. It would solve like 90% of the relationship problems posted on Reddit. I don't understand why couples think it's so difficult to communicate with one another. Like bro, the lovers have to talk to one another. Seriously, if you can't have the time to communicate or try, why are you even married or in a relationship at this point? I agree with you that communication is a magic superpower that we all have access to, but one that seems oddly elusive for many people. But the only thing I would push back on is when you say, not know how to communicate anymore. I mean, let's not pretend like social media or smartphones or whatever has fundamentally changed people's willingness to communicate. Sure, we may communicate in different ways. I for one start crying and can't think clearly if I have to look someone in the eyes, so if the other person is willing, I prefer to have conversations over text so I can really pause and think and not just get overly emotional and shut down. So to me, that's a positive in how things have changed. But also, like in the past, communication was also not great. Spousal abuse was actively accepted and joked about. Spousal assault wasn't a legally defined term until like the 90s. Lots and lots of people were in unhappy marriages back then. They just didn't have the tools or even legal options to do anything about it. I think the kids of today and tomorrow will be alright. Our next post is by user resourceok9109 titled Am I the asshole that I told my husband to stop supporting his adult daughter? I, 47 female, am very frustrated about this and thinking long and hard and want to know if my feelings are valid. My husband, 54 male, keeps supporting his daughter, 27 female, who is a single mom. 
Currently, the daughter lives with her mum and is asking him for help non-stop. I stopped working for a while due to a very bad accident and am living off pension. My husband earns enough to support us, but not to the extreme where he'll have too much disposable income. Just six months ago, the daughter asked for money for dental implants. I happily told my husband to be as generous as he can be since it's not always the case, and she rarely asks for money. After that first time, she just kept asking for more. One time it was grocery, next it's daycare bills, then phone bills. Just a week ago, she asked him to pay some of her bills because she doesn't have work now. It's becoming a habit, and I think that she's too old to be asking him for support, and that this needs to stop. I told my husband how frustrated I am, and he was even more upset and disappointed because I'm being unreasonable, he said. Now, as of writing, he's giving her $700 per week, and I just found out yesterday that we are behind rent. I told him how I see him as a really good father, but I don't think it's right, especially when we barely can pay for housing, and he just shut me out. It's been three days since we stopped talking. Am I the asshole? Edit, I still pay half of our bills as of today. I lost a leg. That's why I'm jobless now and still in therapy, but I'm still looking for remote jobs every day. It's not like I want all of my husband's money when in 12 years, I was the one paying for most of our bills. In the comments, not the asshole. $700 weekly is insane. She is living at her mom's house and still needs that much weekly? Why does she have daycare bills if she isn't working? This is insane. I would honestly have a talk with your husband about this. I know it can be scary, especially when you rely on his income, but this is not okay. You guys are married and need to agree on money spending like this. He's a fool for wasting his money on his daughter like that. She's old enough to figure herself out. I understand helping out here and there, but $700 a week is absurd. OP says, this is what we talked about before. We paid for daycare, but she only tried to work for a week and stopped because she can't bear not to be with her kid 24-7. The following week, she still asked us for help for the daycare bill, and that's when I told my husband no. If she wants to be with a kid 24-7, why leave her at a daycare? Then my husband asked, would it be okay if we continue helping until she gets back on her own two feet? I was okay with it, because my understanding was $700 a month. I don't want us to fight over his kids and money, so when I learned that it's a weekly thing, I didn't mind as long as our bills were paid, and I thought it was only going to be temporary, and maybe she is trying. Six months and an accident later, it is still the same. Info. Does he see the bills, or is he just blindly trusting her? $2,800 per month is reaching drug slash MLM slash her boyfriend is in prison levels of expensive. OP says, he's just sending it through Venmo each time, and he's never asked. I would still be okay with it if our bills were being taken care of. If I didn't see the notice that we're behind rent, I probably would never have confronted him. How can you be okay with this? OP says, I love her and her kid. We would occasionally fly them out every time. I treat her as my own too, but it's just becoming out of hand and we can't foot the bill anymore. But my husband thinks that he still can, and I don't know if we can still be able to survive in the coming weeks. This is none of my business, but is there a chance that you'll be able to begin working again in the future? If so, maybe you could position it as him needing to worry about your own finances now, and then once there are two incomes again, he will be able to help her again when you guys are on a sturdier financial footing. And OP says, I'm looking for remote jobs now. I'm still in therapy, but it won't hinder the job since I can sit up straight now and type. I have some personal savings that I'll use to pay for our rent. I'm okay when she first asked, because she rarely did. But now we're not in a good situation, and it needs to end. I would understand the phone bills if it's from a 14-year-old daughter, but she's 27. I'm disabled and pay for my own phone. My husband wouldn't even bother paying for mine. That's unreasonable. And is it guilt? OP says, I'm thinking maybe it's the guilt. He divorced his first wife when she was 11. I told my husband how it's affecting our own financial status, but he's close-minded when it comes to this, and I think we're going to be homeless in the next coming months if this doesn't stop. 
He was paying $1,200 child support way back. He's giving her more than what he paid for child support now that she's grown. To some nasty troll-like comments, OP says, I lost my leg due to a very bad accident, but I've been looking for remote jobs for two weeks now. Still no luck. I don't think that I was a burden to my husband. It's the first time that I've ever been off work. And I see her as a daughter, but needed to put his on the position for clarification. We share one kid together. He is only eight years old. Before we stopped talking, I asked him to stop giving her much and to lower it from maybe 700 to 450. But he said that I'm being unreasonable. I gave up, but when I figured that we're behind rent, that's when I asked him to stop. Not the asshole. He's putting himself and you at financial risk because of his daughter. This is not okay. How will he be able to help her at all if he goes down financially? If he even has a shot at helping her to stabilize, he has to be stable himself so that he can assist her when she really needs it. It's so bad for so many right now, but that just means that you have to be extra smart about it. Is his daughter working? Is she getting child support? These are things that could remedy her situation or at least help. If he continues to throw money at her problems, she will lean more and more on him and not learn how to dig herself out. This is a huge disservice to her. Struggle makes people innovative and forces them to become independent and take care of themselves. I'm sorry you're going through this. You are not the asshole to illuminate the financial danger that he's putting himself in and you in by giving in to his daughter. OP says, I think she's becoming more comfortable asking him for support now and every time she calls, we know it's time to wire the money. I'm okay with it if our finances are being taken care of. We split our bills, he pays the rent and utilities, and I take care of our monthly grocery. Thank you for being nice. It's tough right now. If your husband won't stop giving money to her when she asks, maybe you need to let his daughter know exactly what her requests are costing him. I bet she has no idea that he's behind on rent and can't really afford to be helping, and she'd probably be horrified, especially since her asking for money is very new behavior. I'd guess that his generosity with money for dental implants made her think that he has more money than he does, and he doesn't want to tell her because it'll be a blow to his ego. But given the choice between his ego and your housing, you need to choose your housing. Yeah, I think there's something going on here that the father knows about probably and won't tell OP because $700 a week is a crazy amount of money to be wiring someone. Also, as pointed out with daycare, you couldn't do your job because you wanted to be with your daughter 24-7, yet you need all this money for daycare. You have rent covered, I'm guessing, because you live with your mom. You should be getting child support. You should be getting some form of government assistance and food stamps and things like that. Why do you need $700 a week for daycare when you want to be with your kid 24-7? What are you doing while your kid is at daycare? What's going on there? What could you be doing in your free time that is so expensive? I wonder... And now, on to the update. Hello everyone. I've shown this to my husband to open up his mind a little, and he apologized. He said he needed time to think for days, and came up with a solution. He's cutting his daughter off. She just called to remind him about the weekly allowance, and when he said that we can't afford it right now, she just started crying hysterically, and told us how selfish we are, all while knowing how we are now behind rent. To those asking, yes, she knows about the accident. She even knows that we're behind rent but still blames us as to why she won't be getting support anymore. My husband used to say that I have patience of a saint and I just cracked now because it's too much. We need to care for our own son too, but since he's still being supportive and everything is being taken care of in regards of our kid, I didn't feel the need to include him in the equation. He's a good dad, and that will never change. I messaged his ex to know how much she's charging her for rent, so we could do half. She was surprised because she's not charging her anything, and is frustrated because all she does is party every weekend. Apparently it's not dental implants that he paid for, it's veneers, and they're just cosmetic. Thank you Reddit, my husband and I are going to counseling, but he apologized, and that's a big step. In the comments, Catastrophe8503 says, 
So she's not paying rent, needs hundreds of dollars on a consistent basis, parties all the time, and recently needed veneers? Could she be on drugs? OP says, We honestly don't know, but could be, and we hope not. She was living a luxurious lifestyle and was buying things non-stop. Her mom questioned her at one point, and she said that it was gifted. When my husband told her about our situation and how he couldn't afford the $700 weekly as we were behind on rent, all she ever asked about was how many days will it be delayed this time. And right there and then, he told her there won't be any help from our side anymore. She just hysterically cried. I feel sorry for her and we still love her, but if my husband won't stop, it will just get worse. All the help we gave her. We weren't expecting anything back, but I just felt sorry for my husband who did all of that and not even a single thank you, but rather, screw you for not wiring me money anymore. She became completely dependent and didn't try working again because she's getting a full salary's worth and it's somehow a mistake from our end. Seriously, as her family, you guys need to at least be prepared that this is a drug thing. It definitely could just be a regular entitled behavior, and addiction doesn't in any way excuse her behavior, but if she's desperate and she's been cut off, especially with access to a child, eyes up. Some bells can't be unrung. OP says, Only source of info now is the ex-wife. She's been updating us, and anything suspicious she said, she'll tell. We're willing to put her on rehab if that's the case, she found a circle that isn't really good for her, and the only thing she'd been addicted to lately is Instagram as per mum. Do not put her into rehab unless she asks for help. Rehab on someone who doesn't want to get clean is a waste of money. It sucks, but it's the honest truth. Unfortunately, this is really true. I've seen two people both just get right back to their addiction after they got out. One was in three different times, and it never worked. Any help towards an addict who doesn't say that they need help and wants to get clean is enabling. You cannot help them. Your only option is to distance yourself. They need to hit their rock bottom. The longer you help them, the longer it takes. And unfortunately, many addicts die from this. It's not pretty, and especially if their family slash your child, I understand. I've had to deal with this, and it's an ugly truth. Anyone dealing with an addict, please get help for yourself and look into what it really takes. By distancing yourself from them, you may be able to help them when they're actually wanting the help, instead of draining your resources and allowing them to hurt you until you cut them off. MD Thomas says, quote, She just started crying hysterically and told us how selfish we are. She's a grown woman. She made a choice to have a child. She needs to figure out how to make the money that she needs to support herself and her child. Still not the asshole. OP says, In that amount of time that we were helping her, she could have been employed if she wanted to. She's a very beautiful woman and is very smart. I hope and pray that she gets her life back together without us helping. If she ever falters, we will pick her up but she needs to really learn, and we honestly couldn't afford the money my husband provided her for. Fair play. She might be in a half with you now, and that might last, but this is an important lesson for her. Her parents won't be around forever, and the girl needs to get a grip and learn to support herself. You both made the right call. OP says, she is. But if I didn't say enough, then we will be the ones suffering. I honestly expected that she would understand the situation we're in now, but she took it the wrong way and had seen me as a villain trying to take away her money. Money we could no longer afford. I'd rather be hated on than for her to not be able to be independent in raising our grandchild. We won't be here forever. Partying doesn't usually cost that much a month. OP says, I just talked to the ex and she's quite shocked as well. She said she takes care of our grandkid full time and our stepdaughter kept on purchasing expensive stuff and she was wondering where the money was coming from and she kept saying that those things were gifts. She didn't even know that we were supporting her. She never tried getting a job and it's partly my husband's fault since he was providing her more, but not anymore. In six months, she only tried once and only for a week. 
My husband was frustrated because he said she never even asked him once how he's doing, but every time she calls, it's all about wiring money, and she gets irritated if it's a day late. That's information that my husband would never tell me before, but I can tell that he's just over the situation now, and he is now unloading his emotional baggage. Yikes. You guys, the parental figures, are definitely going to need to increase your direct communications in the future to make sure that she's not playing you all or playing you against each other until she becomes independent. And OP says, We actually didn't feel the need to consult my husband's ex-wife about my SD's situation since she's an adult who we thought was in dire need of support. We believed that this was something she really needed to be able to grow, but we were wrong. We even paid for college for her for two years. That's why when it lasted this long and she's still jobless, it really made me frustrated. I'm just glad that my husband sees it through my eyes now. It took me a while to understand what is happening, and if not for you guys who helped, he never would have. Yeah, I'm very much glad that you guys figured this one out, but I'm still under the assumption that she's doing drugs here. As that first commenter on this one said, you really need to keep an eye on her and the child because some drug addicts will go to ridiculously insane lengths to get money. You're definitely not out of the woods in this situation right now. You have cut her off and she may just be like a dying animal backed into a corner. Not a pretty situation to be involved in and my heart goes out to you guys. And I really do hope you can sort this situation out because, yeah, it is not pretty. I do wish you all the best in that. Am I the asshole here for throwing out my sister-in-law and her family? My husband has two brothers and one sister. His sister and her husband are not my favorite people in the world. Recently, they have been couch surfing as they lost their home. Long story, which could have been avoided if they had adulted like they should have. First, they stayed with my in-laws, but they used the excuse that my father-in-law has diabetes to get rid of them and their rowdy children. Next was his brother and his wife. They had two spare rooms as two of their older children moved out a year ago and they only have the six-year-old and their 13-year-old twins at home. After three weeks, they had to move out due to a planned refurbishment. They were happy with them as they were generally tidy and helped out in the home. The youngest brother was the next to take them in. While my sister-in-law was there, she helped out in the home and kept her children on a leash. The youngest brother's wife is very house proud, and she allowed them to stay for a limited time only, as they had a baby recently, and her mother will be staying with them to help out for the first six months. Then they emotionally manipulated my husband to say okay. I agreed to it on the condition that she and her husband, as well as their children, keep the place clean, because in the past, the only place they're messy in is my home. For example, if they're throwing something into the kitchen bin, they'll throw it in the general direction of it and not in the actual bin. It is extra gross when it's food stuff that dries up and stinks out the place. Similar things happened in the past, where she would leave her sanitary towels on top of the bin lid in the bathroom instead of in the bin. Her oldest daughter started her periods recently, and they asked the younger brother's wife how things were for tidiness. She said she had no complaints. They went to bed on time and kept the place clean. However, they were only there for two weeks. They are always tidy at the other houses. I know this from experience too. During Christmas and summer holidays when we stay over at each other's places, I've seen the difference in how they are at my place and at other places. Before they moved in, I made the younger brother and my parents and in-laws witness to them agreeing to keeping my house as clean as it is and to chip in with chores. If they broke the rules, they would be out immediately. She fussed and denied past wrongdoings, but said as you wish your highness, sarcastically. The first five days was smooth sailing. This morning I found a sanitary towel on top of the bin and not even wrapped properly. That is not all. Her daughter is staying in my daughter's room and she made a mess of the shampoo and conditioner in her bathroom and had left a tampon on the side of the sink, forgetting it from last night. Her husband leaves early for work, and the kitchen was a mess when I finally got downstairs. I have a curious toddler, and I don't want him to pick up a bloodied sanitary towel. I knocked on the guest room and told her to pack her shit and get out. She looked angry and tried to play innocent. She said it was only some blood and to chuck it in the bin if it bothered me so much. 
I told her no and picked up her suitcase and threw her stuff in it. At first, she wouldn't leave the house, saying she was going to wait for her brother as she doesn't take orders from me, but I told her this house belongs to me too. I dropped her and her youngest ones off at my in-laws. A few hours ago, her husband came back from work and when I wouldn't let him in, he made a scene. He went to my in-laws, but they don't want them there due to my father-in-law's illness. When my husband returned from work, my in-laws turned up in our driveway with her and her family within 20 minutes. They are still standing outside and squabbling about being let in. I refused to open the door and told my husband that if he backs down, he isn't welcome in our home either. So the family thinks I'm the asshole here because I've never liked her and am using any excuse to get rid of her. In the comments, Mobile Prune says, I would have taken photos of the sanitary items left out and sent it on a giant group chat saying anyone who thinks you're a monster for having a problem with this is more than happy to come and clean it themselves or host the family themselves, not the asshole. Jesus. Do you know the ramifications of medical waste? Lord have mercy, that is aggressively gross. I can't. I just can't. I used to work for a surgeon, so I've seen some pretty gross things. But even this is hugely disgusting. Clearly, she's doing it on purpose because she doesn't like you. There is no way that they are a perfect guests everywhere else, but wreck your house without it being intentional. OP says, that is exactly what I told my husband. He says, maybe excuse them this once, and if they do it again, then give them consequences. No, not only will she do it again, but it gives them proof that they can manipulate him into going against you. Nope, you don't want them to claim squatters' rights or something and then be stuck with them. You were clear on the rules. Not the asshole. It should have been done the second that beer called you your highness. See, this right here is the problem. Being sarcastic just now lost you to write the stay at my house. Good luck and F off. Should have been the appropriate response. You don't have a sister-in-law problem, you have a husband problem. It sounds like your husband would be okay with your toddler picking up a used tampon and taking a taste, like toddlers do. There is a good chance they were not cleaning up after themselves at the other homes, because there was a very convenient pre-existing disease, then a refurbishment, then another family member staying for six months. I'm willing to bet the others lied to you so that you would be stuck with her. Her choice to screw around and find out. Not the asshole. Yeah, I'm with everyone else on this one. Isn't it so convenient that all of these things just happen when they jump from house to house? Isn't it just so convenient that all the other family members are like, holy shit, no, 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 we're not looking after her. You have to make amends with them because we're not dealing with their shit. I think it's time for you to make up your own excuse, OP. Say, oh no, suddenly we all got Ebola virus in this house. Oh my god, that you left something around and now there's a good chance of chronic wasting disease spreading through this house and decimating the population. Your snarkiness and sarcasm are one thing, but this chronic wasting disease, it's just too dangerous for you and your kids to be in my house anymore with. I think it's amazing that you have such a shiny and titanium spine in a situation like this, OP. It's quite refreshing to see someone have their boundaries be crossed and then actually enforce the consequences of those boundaries being crossed. Thank you for being the anti-pushover that I wish I was, not the asshole. And now, onto the update. Yesterday, my driveway looked like a scene from some Mexican standoff. They were out there discussing the matter while I refused to go out and engage. After two hours, yes, two whole hours, they left. They're currently at my in-laws, but they made a promise to return to discuss the matter tomorrow as everyone would be home from work, and that way we could all find a workable solution. Well, at least that's what my husband relayed. When my husband got inside, I told him that I would not have them in my house. I told him that he could clean up after them, which he did. After cleaning up, he asked me why I made him do that. I told him that I was just as grossed out over those people's bodily fluids as he was, and unlike him, I wasn't biologically related to them. So he found it unsavory. Imagine how shitty I felt in the past cleaning up after them. He promised to buy a new bin and bleached the sink three times. Our strategy for tomorrow is that under no circumstances are they coming to live with us. 
His niece will be made to clean up the bathroom, shampoo, and conditioner mess. He left that part for her. In the meantime, our daughter can use our shower. We'll see how this turns out tomorrow. In the comments, MJKR says, Good. Stand your ground on this. Sounds like sister-in-law wants to mess with you and has instructed her daughter to do the same. And what the hell? Why is your husband asking why he should clean? The question should be why he thinks you should. More like her daughter has learned bad manners from her mum. She's just following in mum's footsteps. If I were you, I would not let the niece back into the house. Yes, she made the mess, but the whole point is to get them out, not let them back in to clean. Bite the bullet and clean up the niece's mess. No need to re-enter your home if the mess is taken care of. Have hubby clean up the mess. I agree. Do not let the niece in to clean. Your in-laws will use it as a way to get in. Pay a professional service to clean your daughter's bathroom and hand a copy of the bill to brother and sister-in-law. Obviously, they won't pay you back, but let them know that if any relatives try to get you to take them in again, you will share pictures and a copy of the bill via text, WhatsApp, or whatever social media the family uses. They are so disgusting that I would never allow them in my home and would trespass them from my property. I had a buddy who was a temporary homeless for about six weeks. He crashed on my couch. I barely knew the dude lived there. He'd be up and out of the door before I left for work. Sheets and blankets on the couch would be neatly folded, his bags would be stacked in a corner, and the bathroom would be the same as it would have been if I was the only one living here. He knew that I was doing him a solid, so he was respectful of my home and my space. One would think that if you and your family were technically homeless, that you would not be such inconsiderate slobs. OP says, your buddy had common sense and decency. My sister-in-law, not so much. And now, on to update 2. Yesterday was a long day at my in-laws. We went early to get it over and done with. My in-laws started with the guilt trip first. They mentioned that they would take them in until they found a place, but due to father-in-law's diabetes, it wouldn't be good for his health. I told them to tell their daughter to parent her children so they wouldn't run amok like monkeys. That way, they could stay with them as they have spare bedrooms. That didn't land well with sister-in-law. She went on a tirade of how I have always been jealous of her and that I was trying to drive a wedge between her and her brother. I told her she didn't like her own life, so me being jealous of her and her life was a stretch that required suspension of reality. She asked my husband if he was okay with telling me what to do with his family as he always stays out of my family's business. She told him to lay down the law and tell me that his sister and her family would stay as long as it took them to find a new place to stay. My husband was having none of that. He told her that the house was mine just as much his, and it was a two yes, one no deal. Just because I was a stay-at-home now didn't mean that I didn't contribute to buying the house when I was working. The younger brother and his wife said they wouldn't be able to host them as they had his mother-in-law staying due to the baby. The older ones mentioned the refurbishments. Both the younger and the older wives said that I was making it up about the cleanliness as she always kept her own house clean and kept their places clean. They told me to suck it up and act like family. I told them that I wasn't there to argue about her cleanliness. I saw what I saw and her brother was there to witness it and had to clean it up. He confirmed that he did and that I wasn't making it up. My sister-in-law slipped up and said, why did you clean it up? To her brother because according to her, I was meant to clean it up. Either she is the dumbest bichacho alive to admit it, or she knows that she has the whole family in her pocket. Either way, I made it clear that she wasn't going to stay with me, and because she got along much better with everyone else in the family, they would figure out something around their own lives. My husband told his niece that she was old enough to clean up the remaining mess, but she said no. Her father jumped in and said, She's your niece, but she's my daughter. Don't you dare tell her what to do. It got heated between them, so they both had to walk it off. I told her and her husband that the only reason me and my husband were there was to get money back for the bin that we had to throw out due to her sprinkling biohazards around the house. She laughed in my face and said that it would never happen. I said fine. 
I hope you realize that when I threw you out, I didn't pack all of your belongings. I still had her Switch, her husband's and her two younger ones tablets, and some of her jewelry, and a few other bits and pieces, as it all happened so quickly that day. It would all be sold to recuperate my cost. We left, but she was yelling loudly about what she would do to me if I dared to sell anything. My husband has my back, and he said go ahead and sell whatever you need to. Later on, they kept texting my husband to do them one last favor by putting up with her for a few months until she got back on her feet. I told him that no matter what, I wouldn't agree to let her, her slobby husband, and her horde of children back in. They texted me too, guilting me about his niece's education. With no place to stay close to her school, she might have to start in another school if they get a rental, which isn't in the school zone. I texted back tough luck and blocked them. My husband won't block his parents, but was pissed at his brothers for telling him that he was selfish to not take them in as they were in a hard place in their lives. They did admit that it was gross, but excused her behavior by texting that maybe I did something to aggravate it. To top this off, the oldest wife left a voice message through her husband's number to my husband's WhatsApp. She said, I kid you not, you are still okay to watch dot 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 her six-year-old on Tuesdays and Wednesdays like usual. I told him to say, figure out what the answer to that request is. So that is where we are at right now. In the comments, Ravian Wave says, good for your husband sticking up for you and backing you up. I can't believe the audacity of this family still expecting you to watch their children after all of this. OP says, the sister-in-law is not asking me to watch her child. The older brother's wife wants me to continue watching her child as I've done up until now. She works full time and overtime on those days. I no longer feel like helping her out. Oh yes, I realize that. I don't know how she thinks that it's okay after all they berated you for this. I don't blame you for not wanting to do it. I'd want nothing to do with the family after this. She called your husband about it? Not you? This entire clan believes that you're unworthy of basic respect. I can't believe they thought that they would get what they want from bullying you more. Most people with sense would have tried abject apologies and promises to do better. Look, sure we treat you badly, expecting you to clean up biohazards that decent people wouldn't expect of a paid house cleaner, but you're the selfish one for refusing to be a doormat and take the abuse and filth thrown your way. Your in-laws are ridiculous, all of them. Is your husband appalled by the lot? They expect you to keep babysitting. You know they're showing up with the kiddo as usual. Even though they treated you like crap, then of course it's birthdays and holidays with the guilt trips. Lord, now I need another update on what he tells them about the six-year-old. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen such a combination of audacious and entitled and simply cruel behaviors all wrapped in one horrific family. So sorry that you had to deal with any of this. Even five days of that was an insult that your husband should be forever sorrowful for making you endure. Oh my god, all the family is just like, you know what, we have chronic wasting disease in this household right now, but also, you know, you should just suck it up and clean those biohazards, you piece of shit. Can you look after my kids, by the way? I know I, I, know I insulted you to your face and I, I kicked you and spat on you, but like, I still have to make money, and I, I still think you should do some free babysitting for me, right? <laughs> I can't. Oh, my God. I'm a bit iffy on the keeping the switch and, like, the jewelry and everything like that. feel like that's a little bit of a crime right there, but I, I can get behind it. That's funny. Given the, the background of the family being an amalgamation of just a shitstorm all in one, I'm giving you a pass for keeping that and holding it against them. Uh, and selling that because uh, <laughs> you're going blow for blow here. It's funny. I'm loving this. And now onto the latest updates. So I went to pick up my children and had to stick around a little longer as a new family is moving to the area. The parents want to meet their children's classmates' parents, so we had a small meet and greet. The office brought my husband's older brother's daughter, the six-year-old to me, as I'm the one that usually picks her up, and on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, she stays with me. No one had picked her up, and when her teacher noticed me waiting in the hallway, she asked an office admin to bring her to me, thinking that I was delayed due to meeting with the new parents. 
I told them that I wasn't responsible for her anymore on Tuesdays and Wednesday. They took her back to the office, and they must have called her mother. When I returned home from the meet and greet, my husband said that his parents had called him and spoken their mind to him about me abandoning their granddaughter. They also put his older brother's wife on the phone, and she had a shouting match with my husband. The sister-in-law that I kicked out also had a few words with him. It ended with my husband telling his parents that they had lost the privilege to talk to him for a week, and he would only unblock them when they give him and me a sincere apology. He explained that it was up to the parents to make pickup arrangements when I had made it clear that I would no longer provide free services. The sister-in-law that I kicked out is staying with her parents for now. Her husband and her younger two and two of the older ones are staying with my in-laws. The other older two and the other two younger ones are spread between the two other houses. But they made an indirect threat, saying that it would be a very temporary arrangement as she promised it wouldn't take long for her to make her brother see the light. I think I am in for a long ride. In the comments, Astronaut920 says, Like, I think they can't get any more crazy and they continue to astound me. I can't even imagine being in your shoes. Good luck with the crazy. I hope y'all hold your boundaries. Okay, time for OP to update her security system, get new cameras outside and inside the common areas of her property, block access to all social and phone numbers, and give the school explicit instructions, followed by a confirmation email that under no circumstances is anyone but her and her husband permitted to remove the kids from school. Crazy binge rabies is not age or gender specific. OP needs to take precautions. You're not kidding. They seem like very lifetime movie psycho type of people. So, the sister-in-law you kicked out has eight kids? OP says, Yes, I think I mentioned that in the comments of the original post. Didn't read the comments. We'll go back to do that now. Do you know why she hates you? OP says, No idea. I have always treated her with respect. So clearly the sister-in-law can't work with eight kids, but they've been couch surfing with various family members for months. Do they give any idea when they'll actually get their own place again? OP says, none. When they are good and ready. That is an actual quote from her. So, never? If they can continue to leech off family members, all while presumably building a nice little nest egg, they have zero incentive to leave. I hope the kids don't grow up to be as entitled as the parents. So even after you told her that you wouldn't pick up a six-year-old, they still expected you to? Looks like your husband's family are full of assholes. OP says, she wasn't at school yesterday, so they had plenty of time to let her teacher know, but I guess it wasn't important to them. No, they just thought that you would feel bad about leaving her there. They did that intentionally, banking on you caving. I feel bad for the niece, but I'm glad that you didn't give in. Quote, It ended with my husband telling his parents that they had lost the privilege to talk to him for a week, and he would only unblock them when they give him and me a sincere apology. Hey, look at husband! Finally treating them like the spoiled children they've all been behaving like all along. Time out and everything. Sounds like he finally opened his eyes and is playing for the right team. I think it was so smart on OP to make him have to clean up their disgusting biohazard mess for a change. It's amazing how viewpoints change when you are all of a sudden directly affected. Maybe it's my own fault for not reading the comments, but eight kids appearing in the last update just blindsided me. Surely you mention eight kids as a reason for throwing the family out. Housing eight kids is doing a lot to help even if they're perfect. I wonder if they're also making demands about bedrooms, like their oldest daughter deserves her own room so OP's children could go bunk with the other seven kids. This screams missing missing reasons, like OP is a different race or religion. Also, I never understand the you have to take them in. Why don't they pitch in for an Airbnb for a set period of time? She said they're from the same race and religion, but the sister-in-law doesn't like her because she's older than her husband, sister-in-law's brother. I think OP also said in the comments that sister-in-law is used to OP's husband being a pushover to her, so maybe that was the expectation. I hope her husband's spine continues to be shiny and strong. It sounds like he was the sibling who always kept the peace. Screw that. This post hit a nerve. I may not be a pushover, but my siblings have long treated my life events as less than, 
At first I had all the time and resources because I was single. Next, I still had all the time and resources because I was married, but not yet a parent. Reproducing has made them back off a little, but only just a bit. Similarly, all the other family members have reasons that sister-in-law and her brood can't stay, and OP's reasons are the only valid ones. What a dumpster fire, what a basket of assholes, what a circus show that this has been so far. I don't think it's over, I think there are going to be more updates, and if there is, I'm probably going to cover them on live streams later in the week. <laughs> but as it stands in this update, eight kids? And you're letting them get away with this behavior in someone else's house when you're living there for free? And you, as the parent, start putting biohazards around and leaving... Disgusting. Go to hell. I could not deal with this if I was OP. I don't blame them at all. Keep them out. Keep them away from you. Uh, screw the older siblings as well for expecting you to do all this stuff for them, including that six-year-old. Uh, good that you called them on their bluff and forced them to actually deal with their own shit instead of expecting you to go out of your way after they insulted you. Screw them. Still not the asshole for this one, OP, but I'm living for this. This is so good. I, 19 female, have a crush on my roommate, 20 female. I can't figure out if she actually likes me back or not, or is just being friendly. Help. I've lived with my roommate for over a year now. We met in high school, had a few classes together, but we never really were friends. We worked on some projects together and that's it. I never really paid attention to her, but she is smoking hot, and I obviously knew she was and acknowledged it. We ended up going to the same college together though, and decided since we know each other, we should room together. She's a very lovely roommate, but I've ended up developing a pretty huge crush on her after I started being in her company a lot. I'm lesbian, I'm fully out, and my roommate knows this. The problem is, I can't figure out if she's flirting with me or not. Please help me. I'll list some instances from the past year in no order that have stood out to me. 1. She said that we should make a list of each other's favourite orders from a bunch of places so that if we need to order for the other, we can. I said sure, that's good. And over the past few months, when I had a lot of things due and my anxiety was acting up, she kept paying for my favourite order meals. Usually we split money and getting me them with very cute cards telling me good luck and stuff. When I tried to do it back, she said, no, 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 let me take care of you. And my small gay self collapsed. Two, her baby niece came to visit once with her sister, and she referred to me as auntie's very special girlfriend. I freaked, but just laughed it off. Three, she gets me anything I say in passing that I want or circle in any catalog that I have. We don't have a lot of money, but she keeps doing it because she says she wants me to be happy, so I started doing it, and now we're kinda both broke, but have some sort of present buying standoff going on, even currently. 4. She said that I smell very very nice and hugged me once at home and didn't let go for a while, saying I smelt like home and all things nice. When we split for the summer in the past few months, she texted me saying that she misses the way that I feel and smell, with no regard for my gay heart. I said, you smell nice too, and she laughed about it. I never know how to respond. 5. She once held my hand while we were walking outside, and she wanted to pull me along. She didn't let go until she had to, and since then, whenever we go out, she holds my hand. I don't know if it's platonic. 6. I once fell asleep on my work, and I woke up with my head in her lap, and she was watching her laptop and stroking my hair, and I almost had a stroke. She said I looked beautiful, so she didn't want to wake me. She also cuddled me when I was upset about a bad quiz grade, and held me until I felt better. 7. While drunk, she looked at me and said that I looked like I wanted to kiss her, and when I panicked, she was like, I won't mind but she was very, very wasted, and she forgot about it, I think, so I never brought it up. 8. She referred to me by my name for a few months, but now she almost exclusively calls me baby. She asked me if it was okay, and I was like, yeah, go for it, and she was like, thanks, because I always refer to my friends like this, but she doesn't. I've never heard her call anyone else baby. She also occasionally says baby girl and cutie. 9. She said to me, why do you look so beautiful without trying, 
after I had rolled out of bed. I don't know what she meant by that. 10. She was sick a few months ago, so I took care of her, and she called me her little nurse angel and held my hand while sleeping, but she was also sick, so I don't think it counted. 11. She regularly sends me things that I like, fandoms that she's not even in, or random posts, and says, thinking about you, or reminded me of you. She's also gotten into many of my interests, as I have into her interests. Now we're saving up for a convention based on a joint interest. 12. Past Valentine's Day this year, she texted me saying, You're my Valentine. As a joke? And I said, Okay, you're mine. She then gave me a stuffed animal. I had to scramble to buy her chocolates, and then we went to go eat at my favorite takeout place. A guy also gave me a chocolate, we're friends, while she was with me, and she said, Don't steal my Valentine now. 13. We weren't close for her birthday freshly after we became roommates. We were closer for my birthday, and she gave me a very expensive gift after working overtime at shifts, and she said, you deserve the best. Her birthday had just passed, and I went all out, got her cake and presents, and we went out to eat at her favorite place. She hugged me very, very tight after, and said that I make her happy. 14. She also regularly says, Okay, it's a date. Every time we make plans. But that's a fairly common thing to say, so I don't know if she means it literally. 15. This doesn't count, but she looks at me very intensely sometimes. I don't know how to describe it, but it doesn't look very platonic. But maybe she just does that to everyone, so I don't know. She's a very intense person in general, I think. This is all I can think of right now. If I'm forgetting anything, I'll probably edit this post. My friends think that she definitely likes me and think that I'm being stupid and oblivious on purpose. I just think she's straight and doing this out of friendliness, so my friend asked me to post here and get a general consensus. She had a boyfriend in high school briefly, and I'm afraid to ask about her sexuality. I don't want to be let down, but I want her to like me so bad and I keep avoiding her sometimes and her friendliness because I don't want false hope. I know I probably sound stupid and in denial, but I suffer from bad anxiety, and I can't just go up and ask her unless I'm sure. I don't want to lose her. Please help. In the comments, Wazzy Stuffy Kin says, You were living a fan fiction, and my gay ass was cheering this entire post. I love hopeless lesbians. My people. You sound like my girlfriend and I before we realized we were dating. She would pet me and touch my hair, and our legs would touch together, and she would brush it off as, I'm this affectionate with all my friends. And she wasn't. Her lying ass. I love her. Anyway, I think you should ask her how she feels about you. I understand not wanting to mess this up, as she also sounds like a good and kind friend but maybe broaching the subject by allowing her to state her feelings or intentions would help. Something like, do you think we'll be in each other's lives for a long time? Or, where would you like to imagine yourself in five years? Ten years? Or if you're close enough and comfortable asking, have you ever been with somebody else besides the guy she dated? Without it being weird. All those questions could open the door into maybe whether or not she's interested in being with you, or if she sees you as just a friend. To me personally, this seems like flirting. This is all very cute, and I'm secretly rooting for you and sending the power of all lesbians to you. I promise it will work out the way that it's supposed to. If you're really great friends, like it seems that you are, even if you admit that you think that you have a crush on her and you don't want to make things awkward if she doesn't feel the same way, emphasize the importance of her friendship and presence in your life, then at least you could continue an amazing friendship. OP replies, My life of friends to lovers, AUAO3, hit me up. Your girlfriend and you sound so sweet. Sad face. I don't know what that means. And Tessalode replies to that, You're already dating and you just don't realize it yet. That's what I was thinking. My platonic roommate just bought me a ring and told me she wanted to spend the rest of her life with me. Am I reading too much into this? How can I tell if she's just being a good friend? OP replies, how am I being clowned on my own post? Honestly, with how over the top some of this is, it would almost be rude if she wasn't into you. 
Next time y'all are close to kissing, just do it. That will tell you everything you need to know. Quotes, she said to me, why do you look so beautiful without trying? After I had rolled out of bed, I don't know what she meant. I don't know what she meant. <laughs> Opie, please go smooch her already. Romantic comedies are only supposed to last like an hour and a half. OP says, I have to clarify this. It's because we were both extremely sleep deprived and she said it with the straightest face. Okay, definitely not one to rain on a gay parade, but just throwing a couple of cautions out there. By female here, a lot of this list would apply to me and my very straight best friend. While it is incredibly possible that your roommate is also into you, it is possible that she's not. I think communication is a wonderful idea to help soothe your cute gay heart. Just maybe do so in a way that will allow you to keep living together comfortably if somehow you've misread signals. In my personal case, my BFF knows that I was closeted for years and terrified of taking advantage of any of my friends with straight physical affection. She is super physical and affectionate with me intentionally to let me know that my gayness is in no way an obstacle to our closeness. I would just hate to see you lose a living situation that you love because all of us want your crush to be requited. Either way, please post updates. Wishing the very best to you both. And now onto the update. One day later, OP says, I was not expecting this many upvotes or comments. Thank you for everyone's nice words and advice. The fact that you guys are rooting for me makes me feel a lot better. I have no idea how to reply to everyone, I'm so overwhelmed, so I'll make this one comment. Generally, people have told me to just come out and ask her about her sexuality. I am absolutely out to her, she knows I'm gay, and I say, I'm so gay, every single day, in some context. She has not missed it. I've never talked to her about her sexuality explicitly, but she does call both male and female actors hot, but I thought that it was for the memes. Asking her if she is serious is the way to go. Once I have a read on her sexuality, then I'll hopefully ask her out. We'll do this over text though. I'm too nervous to do it face to face. I will update with text screenshots once I have something. A lot of people have also pointed out that dating a roommate is shaky, because what if you break up and I completely agree. But asking her is worth it, I think. If I don't get a concrete read on her feelings, I will die. Thank you again for everyone's nice words. Signed, as many people have called me, useless lesbian. Comment 2, approximately 7 hours after comment 1, OP says, I have decided to take Reddit's advice and not text her about this. I'm gonna wait until dinner tonight and then I'm gonna fully confront her. That being said, my friend saw this circulating on Twitter, and my crush has Twitter, so if she sees this before I have the chance to ask her myself, I'm gonna crawl into a hole and die. Comment 3, approximately four and a half hours after comment 2, OP says, It's almost time to talk to her. Please wish me luck. I'm gonna keel over from anxiety. And for our final update, it is titled... I, 19 female, girlfriend of my 20 female roommate. Hello, this is probably the last post that I'll make on Reddit about this, probably. I didn't expect my r slash relationships post to blow up the way that it did, and it's all been a little overwhelming. I said we were going to talk over dinner. She came home and I made dinner, or tried to, and I said that I wanted to talk to her, and she was like, is it about the post? And I was like, <laughs> what post? Thanks, Twitter. And she was like, I already saw it. Friend sent it to me on Twitter. And I was like, <laughs> oh no. Anyway, it beat being awkward about it. We talked in detail. We're from an area where if someone is out as into women, everyone will know about it. This is why I didn't know whether she was bi or not. It turns out she is or has been figuring it out for the past few years. I honestly should have realized considering how much she thirsts over women in any media that we consume, but I thought it was a joke. She said she likes both men and women, and that she had been trying to flirt and put her feelings across to me from the things that I mentioned in the post. 
She also said my post sounded like a meme and she thought it was a joke until she realized it was me and I can be dense. She did say that I could have just spoken to her before going to Reddit, but why would I do that, you know? She also showed me her phone and her entire Twitter search history was keywords related to my post where she was looking at the responses and laughing at them, both on Reddit and Twitter. Anyway, we're formally dating. Thank you so much for your kind words and well wishes, Reddit. In the comments, can you please, please share your zodiac signs, please? I need to know for science. So happy for y'all. And OP says, she's Virgo and I'm Taurus. I spat my coffee out when I read number nine in her list. I don't know what she meant. Lol. <laughs> so adorably clueless. I got to point four and was like, girl, you're in a whole ass relationship. I kept waiting for something like, sometimes she kisses me on the mouth with tongue. I don't know what that means though. We do occasionally have sex, but that's kind of a roommates with benefits type thing, right? That's how the trend was going with OP being oblivious. To be honest, I don't have the right to criticize anyone for being oblivious, given it's taken me one very memorable occasion, five years after the fact, to realize I was being flirted with. So I completely understand why OP was confused. Our next post is by user carefullink2264, titled, My ex-wife has terminal cancer, and she wants me to get her pregnant so she can experience the gift of being a mom. We had an amicable divorce. One of her biggest life goals was for us to have kids. Me too, but it never happened while we were together. I recently gave her a visit, and she told me that she wants to experience the gift of being a mom before she passes away. She won't make it to see our hypothetical child be born, of course, but she said she wants to have the experience of being a mom, and that it would make her life feel complete. I am shocked to say the least. I can understand where she's coming from to a degree, but it also sounds a little insane to me. I don't know how pregnancy, if it's even possible, will affect her, but she told me not to worry about it. I told her I'll consider it. I feel selfish for even considering it, I think having a child or being pregnant should be intentional, and not just something to cross off. However, I know I can't fully comprehend what she's going through. In the comments, Mace1981 says, What's the plan for the baby? Abort it or let it die with her? You become a single father or adopt it out? This is insane. As I read it, she would not be able to carry to full term, as the prognosis is she's only got months to live. I feel terrible for her, but this plan is even worse. Is this just code for she wants to be intimate with OP again before she passes? Assuming that she had had chemo or radiation, conception is likely not even a possibility. If she's terminal, she probably had more than radiation. Even if she just had radiation, depending on the type of cancer, she may have had to do an ovarian suppression. That is reversible though. Source, me, estrogen positive cancer, radiation, ovarian suppression, followed by hysterectomy and oophorectomy. She's terminal. I imagine soon we'll be in hospice, so being pregnant would probably accelerate the condition and be deadly here. She's irrational. I would try to talk to the family or her doctors if possible. Is she even still capable of becoming pregnant? Because I doubt doctors would be cool with IVF. What about other medication protocols she might be on? Pregnant women can barely take Advil. What if this cancer is hereditary and it passes on to the child? Knowing that you're dying has to conjure up all sorts of emotions. Emotions that are probably difficult to deal with. She's not thinking rationally. I'm not a doctor, but I gotta think that it's unlikely she would ever be able to conceive anyway under the circumstances. That's what I was thinking too. With all the strong therapy she must have gone through to try and beat the cancer, in my honest opinion, I doubt that she would even be fertile at this point. Plus, if she passes away while pregnant, the child wouldn't survive either, and she would be taking two lives to the grave, as horrible as it sounds. I really feel for her, since I was denied the chance to have children due to medical reasons, but I'd be worried as hell to bring a child into today's world, and also about all the physical issues the child might have because of the condition my body is in right now.
Yeah, I do think that there is some more communication that needs to happen with the wife in this instance, because as that commenter pointed out, it may just be her way of wanting intimacy with OP before she does die. Having a baby in the state she's in is not a good idea, because morally and ethically, that is such a grey area, and I don't think it's the right decision to make. But if it's just a situation of playing house with OP, having that intimacy again and reconnecting before she does pass, I think that would be an acceptable middle ground instead of, you know, potentially crushing one's dreams of trying to get pregnant, then not being able to, and having your dreams crushed even further with that expectation. And now, onto the update. I wanted to give an update considering a lot of people are messaging me, and I didn't want to keep up with all of them. Here's what we decided to do. First of all, we came to the conclusion of not going through with this idea. However, we did decide to rekindle our sexual relationship. Don't worry, I used a condom. I prepared ahead of time, and I had a feeling that this might happen. I just didn't want to be the one to initiate things. Her asking me to get pregnant was a pretty good final indication. I also got her a reborn baby doll, and she cried with happiness over it. She said this will help a lot. Thanks to the people who suggested it. In any case, this is the plan moving forward. This experience got us closer again, and I will continue to support her until she passes. In the comments, Lady Booby Poop says, Oh god, that is so bittersweet. You're a great person, and don't you ever forget it. And OP says, Yeah, it is bittersweet. It really put things into perspective that life is short. I'm really going to miss her when she passes, but I'm going to enjoy my time with her while I can. You're a good man. Updates would be appreciated, but completely understand if you choose not to. And OP says, I won't update, so consider this as my final. I'll just continue on with my life. Had to get opinions on it because I thought it was crazy. I really appreciate the people who suggested the Reborn doll, and those who wish us well. Gerund Queen says, Take those condoms with you, or dispose of them thoroughly when you're done. Don't tie them up and put them in the trash. I don't mean to disparage your ex-wife, I understand she's going through something horrible, and I'm sure that she's a great person, but she isn't responding rationally, and you don't want her to baby trap you in her desperation and grief. Just make sure you protect yourself. The only safe thing to do is swallow the condom so you can dispose of it at a later time in the privacy of your WC. <laughs> no? I'm sorry, who's swallowing condoms? That's insane. I can honestly say I've never considered the moral question of intentionally getting pregnant while diagnosed with a terminal disease that means that the baby won't make it to term. That was my first thought. This is a very, very sad situation that has a lot of complicated ethical concerns. I'm glad they went the reborn baby doll route. It was a crazy request, but I can't comprehend the thought of knowing that you have just months left to live to experience the world. I'm glad Reddit didn't really judge and gave him some good perspective and advice to help her. The reborn doll is something that I wouldn't have considered, but it's a great idea. It's tragic on every level. My daughter is everything to me, and the thought of passing before really getting to know her is one of the things that keeps me up at night. She's the main reason I finally listened to my doctor subtly steering me towards blood pressure meds. She's definitely not thinking clearly. If she was, then she would realize that if she became pregnant, it's likely her doctors would remove most of, if not all of her medications. She would be suffering until her last moments. Not to mention, a large proportion of women feel incredibly unwell and nauseous the first few months of pregnancy. I've been pregnant twice, and let me tell you, constant nausea and retching over a toilet multiple times every day for weeks and weeks is not the way that I'd like to spend the last remaining months of my life. This is all assuming she even could get pregnant. It can take up to a year of trying for a healthy couple with no fertility issues, and this is a woman with terminal cancer who's probably had, and might still be having, chemo. My dad has terminal cancer right now. Usually when you get a terminal cancer, you get a heavy-ass narco script. Sometimes my dad says things that make absolutely no sense. I'd give her grace that her anxiety, grief, fear, and medication just effed with her mind for a minute. She wanted to get pregnant knowing that she wouldn't live enough to carry the baby to term? 
I can't even imagine what imminent death does to someone's mind. I think it was a last-ditch effort at normalcy in a way, and one that wasn't well thought out. Women, at least in the past, have been conditioned since birth to be a mummy, to have babies, and now that got taken away from her. Also, having a child is your shot at immortality, a piece of you living on long after you are gone. Again, none of this was a rational, well-thought-out plan, but I can see where her head was at. Also, knowing you have cancer is such a weird thing. I had skin cancer a few years ago that was caught early and swiftly removed. End of. Looking back at how I felt after the initial diagnosis, before we knew that it was easily resolved, is surreal and indescribable. Even knowing that it was probably going to be okay, it was the weirdest headspace.